Looking for a stress-free summer? HelloFresh sends you foolproof step-by-step recipes and fresh, pre-proportioned ingredients to make mealtime a summer breeze. Get 16 free meals plus 3 free gifts with code AWFUL16. HelloFresh.com slash AWFUL16. He goes, it appears to be a string of numbers and letters. And I'm like, no, no, it is a string. It appears to be? And that's going to be true whether or not it's encrypted, man. (laughs) What did you expect him to send all emojis? (laughs) That's just language. (laughs) I don't know. It's just the smell of purple is what we got. I don't know how to... Do we decrypt that? God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, because if we just replayed the archives, the topical humor would be out of date. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath and right. Heath, welcome back. Space Jesus. Let's yep. do this. Oh, hell yeah, man. It's a sci-fi <laughs> week for us. Now, unfortunately, Eli will be unable to join us this week, but we're happy to welcome back veteran guest masochist and host of the Talk Nerdy podcast, Kara Santa Maria. Carol, welcome back. Hey, thanks, guys. I am less angry about this episode. Right, because it's science, and that's kind of your thing. Oh, that's totally why. No, (laughs) you nailed it. Because of the science. That's what it is. You know, is this the first time I've done the show with the two of you and no Eli? I don't think so. We've had the three of us. We've done it once. Yeah. Yeah. No, not a couple. I really don't think. I've done some with, with Eli and Noah, some with Eli and Heath, but maybe only like once with no Eli. It's very rare that we go no Eli. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> so congrats. You got to be way funny this this week. You got to be the funny Fuck. one. I just like that you didn't, the first noise, you didn't, you didn't make a noise like, Ugh, as the I first know. thing. When you got I know. I know. I wouldn't go so far as to say it was so bad. It was good, but it was so bad. It was comical. It was a fun bad. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're getting ahead of ourselves though. So, so first of all, tell us Heath, What will we be breaking down today? We watched Mayflower 2. It's the story of Christian people wanting to leave the United States because of cancel culture Mm -hmm. gone too far. And them pretending that the evil atheist government of the future would try to stop them from leaving. (laughs) Nobody. It's just them being like, we're leaving. What? See you guys. (laughs) And in reality, it'd be like, okay, have a good trip then. Cool. No, we'll leave. We'll seriously. We'll Okay. Bye. That's the plot of this movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I believe so. So, Kara, how bad was this movie? Well, if you've always dreamed of one day finally making the movie that you wrote at Sleepaway Bible Camp when you were eight years old, <laughs> you will love this movie. Also, clan cloaks mm-hmm. and Mars laser tag. Yes. Those are things yes. that happen. Yep. <laughs> and, and I think they're from the original eight year old Sleepaway Camp screenplay. So absolutely definitely saved the wardrobe people some money. They already had some stuff ready. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I didn't enjoy this movie, but I think I would enjoy a novel about how this movie was made. <laughs> so from everything I can find, this movie was made with a budget of around $30,000. Wow. Yeah. Now it's, it, so is that wow? Because it's more or less than you expect. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Actually, now that you've mentioned it. I don't know which direction is worse for them. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, apparently it was like virtually everyone was a volunteer. Almost all that money went to the special effects and it took them six fucking years to get it made. (laughs) This hour and eight minutes or whatever of movie took them six years. Just, oh, and it's so terrible. We can remake this movie shot for shot if we can raise $30,000. I think we could do it. Oh, MG, you have to do that. See, I assume that all the special effects were just them playing a video game and like screen cap. Right, it. yes. Yeah, I'm sure there was some of that. Probably had to pay 30000 in licensing fees for that, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> so there's anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Oh, for sure. Best Worst Canadian Tourism Bureau advertisement. <laughs> this movie was so Canadian. I can't even. Everyone's accents were amazing and I loved it. So many aboots. <laughs> it's it's really sad because like I just made my first trip to Canada in like you know, th- 30 fucking years and I was like, yeah, I could see settling down here when it all goes to shit. 
but then you know you see this movie and you're like yeah but stay the fuck out of alberta though right <laughs> yeah that's their texas yeah <laughs> So I was going to go with best worst computer voice. The, the <laughs> woman who does the voice of the computer on the spaceship was making fun of this movie and no one ever picked up on it. And I just, I'm <laughs> delighted by it. Yeah. I needed her to get more aggressive with the making fun of the movie, but it, what was done was excellent. Yeah. I think she went as far as she could without them picking up on something. Yeah. yeah. So. She's trying to play cool. I was going to go with best worst uniforms that we're apparently going to have when we colonize other planets. It's all shoulder pad. <laughs> So, yeah, yes, thank you. The shoulder pads. So, what apparently in the future, we're going to have like uh, basic hotel uniforms in our mm -hmm. colony on Mars, for example, but plus really big, jaunty shoulder pads. Why? Jaunty is the right word, yes. Very jaunty. What shoulder based risk is there on <laughs> Mars so, that, that's not here? I had them described in my notes as goth floaties. Yeah. Right, so I wonder if there's just not a lot of they don't fall in water a lot there or something. Also, you're forgetting that all the cops in the future wear marching band costumes. Yeah, that they made more do. sense. Even with the little gold ropes yep. on the shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah. Well, because you just don't know when you're going to need to break out into a musical number. So yeah, apparently in space. Yep. They couldn't afford that for this one. Well, right. No, they, but, but they did plan on doing a trilogy. We'll get back to you in about five and a half oh, years wait. to tell you how that how part two is going. Are you serious? They're planning on a trilogy? Well, I mean, it took them six years to get this one made. So, I mean, planning is pretty aspirational. But yes, yeah. I, I'm so excited. Wait, that's going to be really confusing for the viewer. So they're going to make a part two when this movie is called Mayflower 2. <laughs> <laughs> This is Mayflower 3. I get why this is... We didn't think this through, but this is the second. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, no. So it's going to take seven years because they're going to need a year to so sort that out. This can't be Mayflower 2-2, two, two, guys. It's going to be like the pre-taped college show. Just David Cross serious. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what, this movie is going to take quite a while to settle on a plot, so we're going to give it a head start with a brief break, but when we come back, we'll dive into all the random bullshit that is... Mayflower 2. All right, folks, welcome to the first ever writers meeting for Mayflower 2. Hooray! Praise Jesus. So excited. Now, obviously, we're real excited about branching out into the new field of science fiction, but there have been some, let's say, concerns raised about the possibility that we will be glorifying science. Yeah, don't most branches of science directly disprove our religion? Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, but only most. So I had Dave uh, put together a list of all the various types of science that we're going to have to avoid in the script. So, Dave, you got that for us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, biology, obviously, yeah. uh, geology, uh, on account of the whole old earth thing, clearly. Also, paleontology, uh, probably oceanology. Too, uh, what with us believing in the literal flood, so that's out. Amen, brother. Oceanology. Yeah, oh, no, yeah, yeah. Amen. Uh, wasn't done though. Uh, also, archaeology, botany, uh, on account of there being trees older than we think the world is. Mm -hmm. uh, psychology, since that kind of explains why we'd keep telling ourselves this stuff, even if we knew it was a lie. Um, oh, anthropology, uh, cosmology. Uh, is astrology a science? It has the the, a G. No, it's got. Yeah, I don't I don't think so. But it's other devil one way or the other. So let's keep it on the list. All right. All right. Well, I think that's the whole list. Then I think that's it. Well, what about embryology? Oh, uh, what, what do you mean? Well, I mean, that kind of disproves our view on abortion, doesn't it? Oh, oh, mm. good call. And I guess epistemology, too. Oh, all right. All right. How do you spell that last one? It. It doesn't matter. Uh, however. Wait, I feel like philology disproves the Tower of Babel story. No? Oh, yeah. And, and, you know, nothing disproves God faster than oncology. Right. Virology, volcanology, xenobiology, xylology, zoology, zoopathology, and zymology. All right. That's the whole list for sure this time. We got them all. I think we got I'm them all. I'm sorry. Can somebody remind me? What's that last one again? Zymology? Oh, that's the study of fermentation. Disproves the water into wine story. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, I mean, what does that leave? 
Um, uh, uh, laser guns? I don't think that's a science. Laser gunology? Praise Jesus. Oh, this movie's going to be so good. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up with a desperate attempt to evoke Christian Star Trek, right? <laughs> well, actually, I, I have to point this out. Before we get to the, the logo, the Movie Makers is the name of their production company. I feel like that logo <laughs> doth protest too much, right? <laughs> Absolutely. It's like, no, we have a boom operator and everything. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> So we get that logo and then we're looking at like, I guess, moon cities from orbit and listening to a biblical captain's log. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is the point where I realized, God damn it, they're making me watch a sci-fi Christian movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, here we go. Well, the good news is it's only an hour and 15 minutes and that's with long credits. So. <laughs> it was real long. Yeah. I love that the captain's log was like a little sad. And a little confused. It was like, Christianity is hard. I don't know. Some of us went to space because of a prophecy. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Here we are. We're going to do our best. This religion doesn't lend itself to this genre, guys. We're trying. We're trying. <laughs> and then we get the opening credits. And the opening credits are hurling at us so quickly that they're essentially unreadable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, like, they're like a bully in the hallway in middle school as credits, though. <laughs> It's like, I'm the fucking key grip. You going left? You going right? <laughs> All right. So we, we get that. And that's just basically to say, see, we can do space and everything. And eventually we'll do it again. But then we cut to boring old Earth where Rich and Miles are biking down a forest trail. <laughs> yep. yep. Okay. This was almost my best worst. <laughs> they couldn't figure out how to make the camera move at bike speed. Yes. <laughs> so the actors have to bike. Way too slow, like <laughs> enough that like they can't keep their bikes yes. moving forward. Like they almost fall over. Yeah. The <laughs> They're doing little like tight little S's and shit like that so that they don't outrun the camera. Yeah. Just off the top of my head, something that's bike speed is a bike. Another no, bike. Another bike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I had their bikes as wobbling like drunken penguins in this scene. It was just hilarious. <laughs> And they're also just info dumping all over the carpet here, right? So very quickly, we learn that Rich's church is not sanctioned by the government, but it's way holier than Miles' official church of the government of the world above the Illuminati <laughs> or whatever the fuck it's supposed to be. Right. Yeah. So what they're setting up, evil, secular America of the future is run by a PC Christian church. Right, that's as secular as they can get. They still go to church. Right. They still have yes. church. Yes. It's just, you know, they don't hate gay people correctly right. in the PC right. church. It's they're like they're like a bunch of Unitarians. Yeah. <laughs> in the future, there's Unitarianism. Yeah, he literally uses the term PC multiple times in this movie. Yeah. He's like, Oh Ugh. yeah, every time they want the audience to jump scare or whatever, they say, and it's very PC. <laughs> the antagonist of the movie is political correctness. <laughs> it's the fact that I can't even say the N-word on Facebook no more. Yeah. <laughs> Should we use the clan robes? Well, we're not, not yeah, quite yet. That's <laughs> Yes. No, yeah, let's alert. use them now. Let's use them now. <laughs> the next action of the movie as they're just going like, yeah, it's gotten to where Christianity is too PC. Put on this white robe with a hood. <laughs> with a hood. Absolutely. Yes. I was like, wow. Wow, that's in the first three minutes of the movie. We're doing that. Okay. That escalated quickly. Sure yep. did. <laughs> now, these are invisibility cloaks we're about to learn that turn them invisible could have gone with anything other than a white robe, but they didn't. Right. Right. They they could have done like like a black hoodie. Like something that covers the arms, maybe. <laughs> that that would have made been a lot of sense. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. The invisible <laughs> these are invisibility robes and they're they're armless. So like <laughs> they're like invisibility vests. Yeah, they're trying to hide from bad guys. The atheist bad guys would have been like, Hey, do you see those floating arms? I'm just fucking <laughs> shoot the floating arms. I feel like that's something bad, right? Right. So, OK, so they put on their invisibility cloaks and they're they're sneaking into some secret the red zone that they're not allowed to go to. Oh, we're not at the red zone yet. We got to go to yellow first. Come on. You're getting ahead of yourself. Well, there's a sneaking, short movie. They're sneaking to <laughs> the red zone. Oh, I and, see. And I to see. get Billy there, they have to cross through the yellow Everybody's zone. Everybody's lost yeah. in the plot now. No, it's yellow <laughs> zone right now. Right. So and, but what I love about this, too, is because they can't just have invisibility, right? They can't just film 
the woods. So constantly <laughs> on their secret little journey, they're like taking their invisibility cloaks down and saying, all right, it's time to walk to the next spot where we absolutely can't be seen or will be shot dead. Yeah. Right. Do you think they think the invisibility cloaks also turn off your audio? So like everybody's also <laughs> mute. So they have to take them off. The light bends around your voice now yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> They should have just shot the woods because I feel like they would have saved a lot of money if they did that. Yeah. It probably is very expensive. Right? Yeah, this could be done for $29,000. <laughs> yeah. Making them come in and out of clan garb yep. over and over. Yeah. Also, the invisibility cloak thing, you put a giant hood over your head to cover your head so your head's also invisible. So they can't see at all with the full hood <laughs> over their face. So I guess that's why we don't see all the walking in the forest because they would just be stumbling all over. They can't see, right? Well, even if they can see what's hilarious, and this is not the only time this is going to happen with the invisibility cloaks, is that somebody puts on an invisibility cloak and says, follow me. <laughs> yeah, that happens through the whole movie. <laughs> over and over again. So maybe that's why they have to keep taking them off. I'll just keep making beeping noises. Wait, do we get muted by these? I'll, I'll fuck. <laughs> follow my smell. I don't know. Yeah, but Miles is very nervous about these illegal activities. But before we can move on to see where they're headed, we have to like we have to cut over to the bad guys conspiring with blue hologram main bad guy about their upcoming false flag operations. Yep. Oh, yeah. What's his name again? Like like Blackman or Blackney, I think. Blackney. Yeah. As long as okay. the bad guy's Black name is it, right? Blackney. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. So, yeah, we've got bad guy who's like Star Wars, like 1970s Star Wars level hologram. <laughs> yes. Like that's what we're seeing. And he's like bald. So, you know, he's bad. Right. Yeah. And typical. And he represents Nero. What? What is Nero? I don't know. I just know that that is the bad thing. Right. So Nero is a fake false flag terrorist organization that's secretly controlled by the government. Wait, how did you get that from the exposition of this movie? This is my job. So. <laughs> oh, my God. OK. I thought the government was Nero. Oh, OK. Noah's got push pins and yarn. Yeah, all right. He figured some shit out. <laughs> But yeah, the terrorist group Nero is going to bomb a bunch of cities and that's going to give the government an excuse to implement martial law. That is ostensibly the plot of the film at this point. Right, but they're they're already sending like government agents all over the place with guns to take over Christian people's land and stuff. They have martial law. So like I don't <laughs> yeah, I don't understand what that even means. Like they they're really sticklers about the constitution invoking <laughs> martial law. <laughs> Yeah, right, right. No, it, and it's never going to make more sense than that. But meanwhile, we have to cut back to Miles and Rich. They finally reach their red zone destination. Yeah, and and we just to be clear, I I feel like this might be important. I don't know if it is, but they're brothers. Oh yes, I I don't yeah, think I mentioned Miles. like yeah. here we find out they're brothers because they're like mom and dad are going to be so mad at us. Yeah, but they're like forty. <laughs> right, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not young brothers or anything. <laughs> Who knows? Honestly, like I feel like these two actors were probably like. We could play 17, right? Read the two. <laughs> That's probably how old they think we are. I've been doing a lot of skincare. I so, feel like I, I can this off. <laughs> but yeah, so they arrive and Rich starts to explain. Rich is the one that's taking Miles out here. And he starts to explain to him. You remember that guy, Solomon, whatever his name is. I don't recall the last name. And he's like, weird that you would say that since I'm going to see him in the next scene. Like, remember seems like a weird way to refer to <laughs> a guy who's still around. But he's like, you remember Solomon, that rich man that started his own successful business before? And this is the movie's wording. He was forced out by a human rights commission for not being politically correct. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. literally said that, like verbatim. <laughs> yeah. This great businessman, like they, they shut down the greatest segregated lunch counter ever well, right, because right. of political correctness. A human's right. Like, so he was refusing to hire black people. He was sexually harassing his employees. Like, what would <laughs> I, what does that mean in your mind, the movie? <laughs> it's something Noah said. It has to be. Kind of. I'll let you figure that out. This is where I wrote, nope, no Republican agenda yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> But it turns out that Solomon, the rich human rights violator, has <laughs> built himself an invisible something. We're not going to see quite yet. It's a spaceship, but it's clearly a spaceship. It's obviously, yeah, but right, right. 
They just can't give us the whole thing. Yeah. Because it's expensive. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They do show it to us eventually, though, as as if to say, see, it's so much Atlas Shrugged. It's it's Christian John Galt, and yeah. he wants to leave with the Christians, and mm-hmm. everybody would be like, yeah, man, go to the fucking valley in Colorado. We don't want the annoying rich people. We don't want the Christian people. Right. But it would no, be the like, Valus Marineris or whatever this time, but yeah. We need them. So meanwhile, Blue Hologram Batty is addressing a, a fucking potluck in Oklahoma or something, right? This is the scene at Ranchero Vista where they tell all of the self-sufficient, rugged individuals that they have to give up their land and move to cities. <laughs> so many things about this scene confuse me. Okay, so they're supposed to be, yeah, like farmers and shit, but they live in a planned development called Ranchero Vista. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is very confusing. And they're like, they're at like, I don't know, like a community organization like some sort of like you said it's like a potluck dinner with like chairs and i don't know why this guy is welcome there yeah, it's, it's the moose lodge or something yes yeah, the moose lodge yeah. and they're all men at this point i realize so far only white men in this movie oh wow yeah only white men not seeing a person of color or a woman yet in this movie and eventually and you'll see a woman maybe, yeah yeah eventually we'll see one woman <laughs> but i think so far there have been maybe 40 characters yeah no we see quite a few in this scene yeah. alone yeah Lots of white men. Yep. Do we? Is there a single person of color in this movie? I, I can't think of one. I don't no. think there is. There's a lady no. who's like vaguely Eastern European, maybe. <laughs> that counts. They, get, yeah. they give one line to her. Yeah, it's, um. but she, yeah, she white. She very white. That's, that's the closest we ever get. So the plot here is that the government wants to make their land a yellow zone. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah, so the government wants to seize their land and put everybody in cities because in cities, you can't be an individualist country boy who can exist on your own you have to be you know you have to like submit to the will of the government etc yeah th- this is jade helm 15 yes that's what that's what they've reacted to here yep jade helm that's a thing that never happened that they freaked out about during the end of obama's administration and no we never like took over all the walmarts to put them in cages no none of that <laughs> happened yep i'm I'm also confused as to the internal consistency of the actual film here because they make the brother who goes to normal church be the guy who lives in Ranchero Vista where they're all farmers and terrorists. And they make the terrorist brother live in the city, which is where the government wants you to live. Yeah, no, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Like they should switch those roles, no? They could write whatever they want. They, yeah. yep. I guess so. They were eight years old when they wrote this. We yeah, need to true. remember yeah, that and give them easy, credit. Yeah. <laughs> So, but, but, okay, so this is a great scene too, because we get a couple of different guys that agreed to be in the film if only, but only if they could tell a government feller what they really thought, right? Give them the what for. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. So we get two separate what for's and they're competing. (laughs) Yep. So I have the first guy just down as as potluck cowboy because of the hat. But he's the one who starts talking about how their so-called science is politically motivated. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. A guy in a cowboy hat, it just, it takes away from the science speech. Your so-called consensus of science. It's not fair. That's an unfair stereotype. But just don't have the cowboy hat guy give the science speech for your team, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. But also, to be clear, none of them talk like this. They all talk like a boot. Yeah, right. It's so funny because they're all so (laughs) Canadian. And you're like, what? This doesn't compute. (laughs) Well, and so and during his what for he starts talking about how, you know, they're suspicious of, you know, anytime there's a good cause, you guys come and try to use it to take away our rights. And the, the causes that he lists that he is suspicious of are security, the environment, bullying civil <laughs> rights that's my favorite so civil rights are getting in the way of my civil yes rights. yeah that's, that's correct <laughs> you're very convoluted <laughs> reasoning uh, also there's like 11 people at this meeting but only two of them clap for this guy's what for yeah. oh, it's the best he finishes his little part of his speech and the people on his team are like Oh, did you want us to oh, clap? Do we sorry. clap? Okay. Now right. I feel clap. stupid and nobody clap. else is going to clap. <laughs> yeah. And evil government guy's like, okay, I'll give you a couple seconds to clap. Moving on. We're taking your land. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is happening whether you like it or not. And and for all of you that don't want this to happen, add them to the list. I was like, ooh, vegan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. The meeting wraps up. We cut to wherever blue hologram guy is projecting from. And he's like, they, they put those two guys that clapped on the list too. Not both him and the guys that clapped. <laughs> God. One guy kind of pump faked the clap too. Yeah, let's so like him. just put him on a different, like, close to the list. We'll put him near the list. Yeah. 
So, okay. So Miles is heading home. By the way, everybody's biking to this point in the movie. We see nobody's in a motor vehicle because they can't do future cars. So oh, right. Because they have they have two Chevy Silverados lately. That's what the cops drive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah they, <laughs> the cops, they like them old. They, they, they just don't make them like they used to, apparently. It's all about torque. What, what are you talking about? So yeah, so Miles is heading home on his bicycle, but he sees the the cops forcibly evicting Mr. Higgins, the the cowboy who gave him a what for at the meeting. Oh, that's what was happening there. Yes, uh huh. They're okay. they're coming to take his land. Apparently, they had the meeting and they're like, "We're coming to take your land." And by the time you got home from that meeting, they were there taking your land. Right. <laughs> and he was there too somehow, having his land taken. Right, which is confusing. odd. Well, maybe he has a car. You know, it doesn't oh, have to right, bike right. home. <laughs> Again, maybe they think they're playing 17. I don't know. So he runs home to get his wife. Miles does. Oh, here I see. I, I wrote, oh, look, a woman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very exciting. Yeah. I mean, you used that indefinite article, but yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you didn't know at this point. So yeah. So and, and he's like, hey, wife, the cops are coming to, to take us away and throw us in prison for owning land, apparently. Yeah, she's very confused. She kind of doesn't buy it. She's like, we didn't do anything wrong. Come on. Don't, right. Don't be crazy. And when even when she convinces them that they're coming, she's like, okay, what if we hold really still and turn off the lights? You know, like, and they knock and they'll think we're not home. <laughs> right, because it's like T-Rex. Also, my name's fucking Kate. I would just like to announce that to everybody. My name's Kate. Oh, her name's Kate. Okay, we'll call her Kate from now on. <laughs> not the woman. The only reason I knew her name was Kate is because it keeps describing in the like description of the movie on IMDb. It says Miles and Kate are a couple. Yeah. Well, and she's the only woman. So, well, right. Yeah. yeah. So she yeah, must be yeah. Kate. Yeah. Yeah. So, but they run to Rich's house, right? To his brother's house. Right. The anti government brother who lives in the city. Right. <laughs> in a house that looks like a teen group's rec room. Yep. yep. <laughs> it's a very strangely designed house. It's like one wall of paper books, which apparently is bad paper books, mm -hmm. and, and lots of chairs. Kind of willy nilly, yeah. It's like a, it's like an Al Anon meeting. Yeah. yeah, no, right. But but so but they're actually actually all there to have fucking contraband Bible study, right? Yeah. So and, and they have this huge bookshelf behind them, and I'm like, I I bet you a thousand dollars, all those books suck. Like every single one of those books, <laughs> that is absolute shit. <laughs> I bet the fucking Chronicles of Narnia is the best thing on that shelf. But all the illegal Christians are like, ah, you've seen the light. Now you're coming to contraband bible study and they're like no we're we're running from the cops and you ha this guy is my brother this is where they explain to him that the cops think that they're terrorists because they have a garden and make their own power <laughs> oh and and he has an old copy of like his grandfather's bible on his bookshelf and and doesn't oh, hide right, it yeah before they edited the old un pc bible right yeah yeah also make their own power yeah. so, listen <laughs> If you have like a secret coal fired plant in your backyard next to your garden, you are a terrorist in some sense. Like, I don't I want the government to check on that. Right. But So but these jackasses think that like the government is threatened by you when you like have solar panels or or run a windmill off of your property. Right. The, their whole fantasy is that their rugged individualism is a threat to the PC universe. Right, but again, they live in Ranchero Vista. <laughs> you know, let's be clear about this. Some tells me that's on the power grid, yeah. <laughs> but of course, the, the illegal Christians are like, here, why don't you take this Bible? And they're like, oh, no, no, we have the digital copy. And they're like, yeah, but that one's been edited, right? Unlike our Bible, which has definitely not been edited. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> the King James version, you say? <laughs> no, look, it's initialed by the original writer at the bottom of each page. God, just G. I just got the one. Oh, yud hey vow hey. See, those are the initials. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so but they yeah they but they need a real Bible. And what's hilarious about this is before they said no no we have the digital version. They said they had their grandfather's antique Bible, so they already have one even in this dumbass story. It's just <laughs> right, but not on them. And spoiler alert: later she whips the Bible out. She does not have a handbag. This Bible is too large for pockets. I think she's been carrying it under her tata this whole time. I think they're like, here, take this Bible. And she's like, I know just the place. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, so then 
they talk about how Solomon has gone missing, the guy who built the spaceship, for just a second. And then all of a sudden, the cops are in the room with them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just hello. So we don't hear doors getting kicked in or windows being broken. We don't see them enter in any way. Just suddenly they're in the room yelling on your knees to the Christians. Well, yeah, this is Canada. We don't lock our doors. Come on. <laughs> so, yeah, they're, they're like, on your knees. And the Christians are like, haha, that's where we wanted to be anyway. And then, but, <laughs> and then and this does not seem very cop. Maybe the Canadian cops are just this polite or whatever, but they're like, all right, guys, if you're not a real criminal terrorist, go ahead and leave now. We're only here for the real criminal terrorists. And Miles and Kate are like, Oh, okay. So we're not, we're going to leave then. We're not. <laughs> oh, yeah. The wording is we're only interested in non compliant Christian radicals. Yeah. yeah. Verbatim. And then Miles and Kate are like, we're compliant Christian radicals. Can we take off? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> you can take off. So, yeah. And what's amazing isn't the fact that Miles and Kate are like, oh, well, then we should leave probably. It's that everyone else isn't. Yeah, this is this is where I'm always so confused. And I like wrote a bit about this. Like, I don't understand these arbitrary Christian standards like they're willing to hide and have secret meetings and read secret books. But when asked if they are going to like you need to stay if you're Christian, they like can't say no. It's like when people say a cop has to tell you if they're a cop. <laughs> That's not a real thing. Like, oh, there's no, like if you go, are you a cop? They can say, no, I'm totally not a cop. Like these people can do that, too. They know that, right? <laughs> Apparently not. So <laughs> Miles and, and, and Kate take off. I love that they're like, you know, hey, take our bikes. And it's like, how would you know they didn't have bikes? They just showed up. Any, anyway. No, I love that they said that because it's like it's like this really serious scene and they have all this really suspenseful music and they're down there with their head, you know, their hands over their heads because they're about to be like captured by the police and his brother who's a traitor is like running off with his wife and he goes, take our bikes. <laughs> yes. Take our bikes. <laughs> it has a nice basket. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> When you go faster, the light gets brighter. It's really cool. <laughs> so, yeah, so we, we rejoin Miles and Kate. They're they're out in the woods somewhere. And, and, and there's this great, like, the scene opens with Miles angrily kicking a rusted barrel. But, like, it's the most tentative, angry kick that you've ever seen. And you, like, he obviously hurt his foot the first time. <laughs> and they're like, we need the same. And he's like, my foot's hurt. And they're like, use the other foot. And he's like, okay, but I'm not kicking it for very hard. What if I just push? I'm right footed, you guys. <laughs> I, <don't know> how. <laughs> I also like that they clearly rode their bikes into the woods like a hundred feet as their hiding yep. spot. Yes. Uh huh. So <laughs> they go to that hiding spot, have a little weepy fight for 10 seconds. And then it's like, all right, that's enough. We're like a hundred feet until I can see the bad guys right there. This is nothing. We need to leave again. <laughs> yeah. Well, the music is pretty sure this is some exciting, like next level shit. Oh, clearly. And and I feel like Miles for the whole movie and many of the other characters as well, like they use that Instagram filter that's been going around where it makes you look like you're crying. Have you guys seen that? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like this like, like really exaggerated sad clown face. <laughs> the whole movie. Yeah, so yeah, so he's crying about how he wishes the rest of those idiots were willing to deny Christ too. And and then the, and then he's like well, I guess that's the end of this dialogue. Let's go to another scene. Let's, let's go. <laughs> yeah, like, mm, we ran out of ideas. Moving on. Yeah. These are nice bikes. So, <laughs> so the faster you go, the brighter the light is. <laughs> I'm going to put a baseball card on the spokes. So, <laughs> <laughs> so meanwhile, so we cut back to illegal Bible study and the cops are like, ha ha, it turns out we weren't really here to arrest you. We just wanted to make sure you weren't faking how Christian you are. Is that what happened? Yes, yes. <laughs> wow. I just thought they were super nice because they were Canadian. Well, that's, yeah, that's possible. <laughs> but these people aren't arrested later, so there's that. Yeah. But also, this won't come back for a very long time in the movie. So I thought I had maybe miswatched or misunderstood it for quite a while afterwards, too. But no, that is what's supposed to be happening. Okay, okay. No, put up some more yarns and pushpin. Figured it out. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So now Miles and Kate get back to their house, which is where they were running from in the first place. <laughs> You're right. They just went right back home because they're like, we know of two places. <laughs> Double bluff. They'll never think of this. And of course, the cops are there. So they're like, right, right. That is why we left. And then they have to run again. 
<laughs> Should have gone triple bluff, which is single. Fuck. Okay. Well, Just, so, and I'll here's swear. the stupid fucking thing is that this script needs the cops to be right on their tails. Right. And they just had him leave the house the cops were in. And the writers couldn't think of another way to have the cops be on their tails. It's the best. It's amazing. (laughs) And the cops have blasters, by the way, because this is like, I feel like this whole movie, they're, it's probably budgetary constraints, to be honest, but they're going for like a near future handmaid's tale vibe, you know, where Mm -hmm. only like some things are advanced technologically, but everything else is kind of the same. But they're failing miserably because these people are like pro Gilead. Right. Yeah. Like, it's like they don't get <laughs> right, it, yeah. you know? Because <laughs> they're telling Gilead side of the story for a change. Yeah. 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 Right. And the cops are like, freeze, we'll shoot you with this very ridiculous gun that we have that makes the noise of like an airsoft, like a Nerf dart flies out. Oh, it's no good. Well, it is a Nerf gun, to be to be clear. Yeah, and then I'm, they just... T- so, no, you know what it is? Is it's two Nerf guns taped together as well, <laughs> side by side. It totally is. They should, they make the mistake of showing it close up later, but yeah. <laughs> Why would two make... Whatever. Because it looks... In the future, different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so the cops threaten them and they're like, we'll shoot. And they have to run away again. Of course, on their bikes. And jumping onto bikes quickly is never graceful. But we get to watch and be like, hup, okay, no, I got stuck. I'm stuck on the pedal. Okay, nope, got it, got it, got it. We're running Shouldn't away. Shouldn't have put that baseball card in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I fell, fell out. I want, I want to have the car. All right, so I just want to point out that Buster Keaton managed to once gracefully start a penny farthing. But yes, generally speaking. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Buster Keaton just rides way past them. Come on, like, guys. You guys suck at this. Jesus. <laughs> Avoid the glass. Avoid the glass. It's a pane of glass. There you go. <laughs> We're not there yet. We're not there yet. <laughs> so, yeah, So, but they're heading to the red zone. They're getting away from the cops. And damn it, if a drone doesn't catch up with them. Right. And I, there's this great moment where Miles has to throw Kate to the ground to, you know, avoid the drone, but he clearly throws the actress down way too hard. Yeah. Right. His domestic violence streak comes out a little too, too yeah. aggressively there. Yeah. And then he explains to her, he's like, okay, I've got an idea, but it involves you running away and the drone following you. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, well, yeah, she has that idea too, man. <laughs> it's called fuck you. <laughs> but she's she's like okay I trust you so she runs off the drone chases her and I wrote in my nose like if Miles just dips the fuck out this is going to be the most realistic Christian movie of all time <laughs> but instead he went to get a laser gun and he shoots the drone with it once uh, he's got it well I must have blinked because I missed that whole scene <laughs> <laughs> so- yeah I think the movie missed the whole scene where somehow he had a really powerful laser gun the whole time and just decided <laughs> right. to use it now. Well, so, okay, the he, again, I, I got to go back to the pushpins and the yarn. He went to the invisible ship and got a laser gun off of it and then came oh. back and shot the drone. But just the way he just grabbed the one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like he's like, Kate, you're on your own, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, so the, the, the way it was supposed to be working again, like I said, you got to You got to do the yards and the pushman for some of these. But like she had to run off so that the drone wouldn't see where the invisible ship was. Oh, she was the decoy. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. That's well, that's what ladies are good for in the Bible. Right. Yep. 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 So she was like running in circles around a garbage can, like tag in (laughs) elementary school for a while while he went to an invisible ship, got one laser gun and came back. That's what happened there. Well, he tells her run out for 10 minutes and then come back. 10 minutes is an insanely long amount of time (laughs) to run through the 20 minutes total. He realized that. Right. right? (laughs) Also, she would be 10 minutes away. Plus, however far you had to go to get the fucking laser gun. Right. So, yeah, it does. It makes no fucking sense. But yeah. So, yeah. So he shoots the drone. Then they go back to the invisible ship. And this is where, of course, all that mime training these two have really pays (laughs) off. (laughs) And he's like, no, it's an invisible ship here. Let me uncloak it for you so you can see. And it's like, why would you do that, though? Yeah, because now they can see it, too. Right. You could go inside and she could just see it from there. (laughs) <laughs> but uh, but they wanted to prove to us that they could uncloak the whole fucking ship. They had uncloaked the whole ship budget. Damn it. <laughs> so, okay. So now they're on board the ship and, and he's like, yeah, this was built by Solomon so that all the Christians could escape to Mars where they could be safe and, and practice their religion the way they want. And she's like, do you want to just take it for just us, though? And, she, and he's like, yep. 
And maybe more people? No, probably just, just us. Probably just the two of us. That would be a lot. <laughs> this giant ship, just us. Yes. Because we're Christian, and that's the Christian way. Oh. And then, of course, they have, I think it's supposed to be a humorous moment where he tries to feel, oh, he's pushed the wrong button. Which button makes the ship take off? Yeah. He, <laughs> at one point, he's like, all right, so we're on a magical spaceship now. The fuck do we do? I don't know how to fly this. <laughs> I'm just going to press buttons and then like Siri voice comes on and is like purging all fuel in 10 seconds. You shouldn't have pressed that. Yeah. And he's like, fuck, button mashing usually works on Nintendo. All right. Uh, voice <laughs> commands. And he's like, Siri, we fly now. And Siri's like, thank you. Yeah. We fly now. Why didn't you just say so? Yeah. This will- and they're going to fly to Mars. Yeah. He pushes the ship does all the work for us button. Yeah. yeah. And- and the inside of the ship, to be clear, is made out of cardboard. It's clearly made out of cardboard. Yes. And my uh. favorite part <laughs> is that the captain's chairs are just rolly desk chairs. <laughs> yes. They're yeah. just, they're not bolted down to no. anything. No. They're just shitty. You can see the little, the little lever on the side to make it go up and down. <laughs> oh. It's yikes. They're in a just barely above Ed Wood level cockpit. They're here, in a yeah. shoebox diorama, just big <laughs> yeah. enough to fit them. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and also, so they so they take the ship takes off right to head to Mars. And I love there's a space elevator right next to him for no reason except that was already in the stock footage that they bought. Well, yeah. <laughs> right. Was was there a really big cloak over the space elevator? <laughs> I mean. We do have that technology. Yeah, right. No, was, well, yeah, but but it, later they won't, or nobody will know about it except the Christians, which is pretty fucking weird. Apparently, Solomon built that too. Yeah. Uh, again, it's like it's like uh, Atlas Shrugged. You need a whole bunch of fictional technologies for the for the whole thing to make sense. Christian people, uh, I've always said that they're going to be at the forefront of space technology. Yeah, and invisibility <laughs> cloaks. Yeah. All right, well, I'll tell you what. Our heroes basically just launched the only lifeboat on a sinking ship with just the two of them in it. So we're going <laughs> to take a quick break while everybody comes to grips with how demonically selfish those characters are. But we'll be back in a flash with even more Mayflower 2. <laughs> so stupid. I just don't understand, Ned. Just because we're Christians, they think we're terrorists? Do, do you have a garden? Do, do, you, do you produce your own power? Um... We have a garden, sure, yeah. Well, see, that's it. Then if you're self-sufficient, you don't depend on them, and that makes you a threat. Huh. Well, I mean, it's kind of a small garden. Yeah, yeah, we get, like, fresh vegetables out of it twice a year, max. And they're usually not very good. Right, but but but, but, but it proves that you could be self-sufficient. From, from just a vegetable garden? I mean, well, you might also fish, too. Yeah, we could fish. Still nowhere near enough to satisfy our basic caloric needs from the, the garden and the fishing. Well, yeah, and that's just food. There's so much more we need to survive. Well, but right, but they, they, they're they afraid you're also going to get solar panels. Right, but that still doesn't make us self-sufficient. Literally nobody in this country ever was or will be truly self-sufficient. That's nonsense. Yeah, I mean... Even if you lived out in the woods, grew and hunted all your own food and stitched your clothes together from the hides of your kills, you'd still be dependent on some outside power to keep marauders from coming along and taking all of it from you. Yeah, not to mention all of the medicinal and scientific breakthroughs that you'd have relied on to to even make it far enough in life to make that decision to be faux self-sufficient. Uh, yeah, maybe they think Christians are terrorists because almost all the terrorism in this country is perpetrated by Christian extremists. No, uh, huh. it, it's definitely, I'm pretty sure it's just that they hate freedom. Okay. I'm going to go turn you guys in. Yeah, it's probably for the best. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Miles and Kate on deck of their ship watching the Earth recede. Now, this is, of course, they're not going to really deal with the whole gravity issue. This just this ship has plenty of gravity, why do you ask? <laughs> oh, yeah. Not just that. Like, the whole speed issue. Like, <laughs> like they're not in zero G. They're not even moving. No. They're just standing and roll. The rolly chairs aren't even rolling around. <laughs> like, what? Just hold on. Let me take the cloak off of gravity. There we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. we're and so, yeah, they asked the computer, like, how long will it take us to get to Mars? And the, and the computer's like, two weeks. Really? Two weeks? 
So you're going somewhere between 10,000 and 741,000 miles per hour. It seems like you're not. <laughs> there is a toll on this route. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Just go to Mars. Your destination is in another time zone. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> Do you have a COVID card? All right. All right. <laughs> Obviously, you know we don't. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so they're headed to Mars and it's going to take two weeks. And I love there's this kind of like, well, fuck, we got nothing to do for this part of the movie, do we? <laughs> Oh, no, he literally gets, he's like bored already. He's like, two weeks, gone. Oh, yes. The best. And he's like, like <laughs> you, you want to play a board game? Literally. <laughs> yes. The movie runs out of stuff to happen. And they're like, you want to fucking play some some board games? We could play I don't some know. part with the audience could watch us play Parcheesi. Yeah. Those can <laughs> come down to the wire a lot of the times so in those games. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted Siri to jump in and be like, dude, you're on a fucking spaceship. You don't need board games right now. Just take this in. Do you understand what's happening? Zero gravity sex. Like, come on. To be fair, they probably watched the shitty hospice movie that opens with them playing a board game. And they're like, we can totally use that plot device. <laughs> it's fine. They did it. But then Kate is like, oh, hey, look, I found a, a hologram full of exposition. And he's like, really? <laughs> and she's like, no, not really. Actually, we're just going to show you the beginning of it. And we're going to show you a fucking Princess Leia going, help me, Obi. And then it's going to cut off and we're never going to go back to it. Yep. Right. It's, it's Solomon Foster. I wrote it down at this point. It's Solomon Foster, the rich guy who built the ship. And his hologram says, hi, I'm Solomon Foster. Welcome to the ship that will take Christians to Mars. I guess I didn't make it. Right. Right. And that's the end of the scene. Seems like I could have just written a note because it took you forever to find <laughs> the hologram thingy and then smush it into different stuff on the ship for a while. And then you eventually, Siri had to play warmer, colder with you. It's it's ridiculous. <laughs> also, like, yeah, why didn't he just program that into the computer? <laughs> Have that start right away. <laughs> All right. So meanwhile, back on Earth, the illicit Christian club is finally going to acknowledge how fucked up it was for them to just steal their lifeboat. Right. With With just them on it. And keeping in mind that they were in no immediate danger when they launched it. Right. They could have just chilled out there until their food supplies ran out if they wanted. Just like all the Christians are doing. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, but Rich assures everybody that it's not, it's no big deal. God will provide them a different spaceship or something, probably. <laughs> <laughs> right. But also, how how do they even know that they took the ship? Because they haven't left the youth rec room yet. Right. <laughs> they're just, they're still there just thinking hard. Somebody go over there and poke the area where it used to be. See if you have to do any mime work when you get there. Yeah. <laughs> also, okay, so I don't, the guy that he's talking to, I don't know if this character ever gets a name. He's Emmett's dad. I had him as Gollum with glasses and a comb over. Yeah, I feel really, <laughs> really bad saying this, but this is a really unfortunate looking group of Christian rebels. It, it is. They're not, <laughs> not a pretty people. No. In this youth group <laughs> rec room. So, so, okay. So now the movie's just like, I don't know, man, two weeks have passed because fuck, I got nothing. They, the Parcheesi scene wasn't as interesting as we thought it might be. So. Right, but they didn't use any sort of device to tell us two weeks had passed. No. Except they're just at Mars now. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, it's like they found a shortcut or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, and apparently Siri has a landing button as well on here, right? He's just like, oh, um, I guess we, we should just press the button that says land the ship now. Huh? Yeah, man. Just tell me to do all the stuff for you, please. Just, just, I'll do it. Great. And he literally goes like, is there a space elevator? Maybe, maybe we should use a space <laughs> elevator. Like, <laughs> wow. What a weird guess. Because there happens to be a space <laughs> elevator right here. Also, you're landing. I feel like I, I get it for taking off more than for. I feel like you could have still just landed. It's like he was playing D and D. He was like, "Can I roll for space elevator?" And it was like, <laughs> "Yeah, all right, you can roll for space elevator." And then Kate is like, "Something doesn't feel right for no reason whatsoever." After two weeks of wearing the same clothes, standing in the same <laughs> spot. All of a sudden, something doesn't feel right. I'm like, what is happening? I hate these people so much. And I'm the not talking about the characters. Had a shower and so on. Yeah, <laughs> I'm talking about the actual actors. I hate them. I hate them. I agree. hate them. Yes. 
but yeah, she's she's starting to two weeks later have second thoughts about stealing the only lifeboat and dooming all the other illicit Christians of the earth. Actually, no, she isn't. That's why I wrote my notes and I was like, oh no, actually she just thinks Mars smells funny or something. Yeah. But anyway, they had fucking stock footage of a ship landing via space elevator, so they're gonna use it. This is like if the actual Mayflower was like, you guys want just the two of us. I say we take the Mayflower and go to Antarctica. I don't know. <laughs> and then they were like, right? you know what? That was dumb. All right. Well, we'll figure this out. I don't know. This was when not we get helpful. back from Antarctica. Yeah. So, okay. So they arrive at the Mars Colony slash Double Tree by Hilton. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this entire, every time they're on the Mars Colony, you're just like, no, man, that's the business center. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At the Hilton. Mm-hmm. In the so. space future, we'll live in a, like a, a meh hotel chain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where we get Heath's best worst. This is where the goth floaty shoulder pads first are introduced to us. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't also I don't get because goth floaty shoulder pad lady is explaining for like an interminable amount of time how dangerous it is out in the Martian atmosphere and mm-hmm. how they can't like go past the glass. The only thing that's keeping them safe. Yeah. But how did they get into the hotel? Great question. That's an interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Without knowing all that information. Yeah. Space elevator goes straight to one of the floors inside the building. <laughs> Nice. You know, it's, it's like, like those really nice apartments like, that op- the, the elevator opens right up into your apartment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like the tram. It's just yeah. Like yeah. right there you the go. Hotel. <laughs> also, her speech there is weird. She's like the leader of this colony on Mars. And she's like, listen, first thing y'all need to know, don't break the walls of our space colony. Right. Look at me. Don't break <laughs> the wall. Like, who is that for? <laughs> right. That's for us, the viewers. <laughs> just like, Space Eli puts away a pickaxe very slowly. <laughs> well, yeah, she's like, if you go out on the surface of Mars and try to, you would explode like Arnold Schwarzenegger in Total Recall. And and don't break the walls because they're very thin and anything at all would break them. And and this never is relevant. No. no. It, like, it would make sense if they were going to set all of this up and then later these people would have to like run out onto the surface of Mars for a very brief amount of time or so, or that that was going to be threatened at some point. But none of this ever comes back. No, mm. it's it's like if it's like in the movie, if she had a long diatribe about how we can't breathe underwater. <laughs> Just so you guys know. And it's like, no, this is like common knowledge. Like, you don't have to explain this in the movie. <laughs> Eli slowly puts back on his scuba stuff. Yeah, yeah right, right. That's why we wear these floaties. Yeah. So, yeah. But she's very into the walls. She tells them all about how awesome the walls are. Maybe this is a Donald Trump thing. Like, walls are good. I don't know. Okay. I feel like it was just, it was supposed to be foreshadowing because we're about to find out that this is like an evil space colony and she's mm-hmm. supposed to be like in charge of something bad. And this was supposed to be her being mean, like, don't break the walls because. It's going to have like a prison situation. So this was supposed to be like evil walls. But it's that's just, what that was. W- what actually happens is a person being like, we're in space. Don't break the walls of our thing. Yeah. I, because, you know, we die. I thought the foreshadowing was basically like later when you're having a space laser tag chase. The reason all the cops only have like tasers is because if they okay. shoot bullets, right. they'll mm-hmm. break the glass wall. Oh, yeah. No, they it's Chekhov's taser and they nail it. Yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> that's what that is. But very implicitly stated. Yeah. Like, <laughs> explicit up front, implicit yeah. on the back end. Yeah. But anyway, so he's, uh, Miles is an electrical engineer and <laughs> Kate is going to be a space journalist. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> kind of worked it in and it doesn't work at all. The guy, the Mars Colony guy's like, no, this is great. We need electrical engineers. That's perfect. Miles, you'll do that for us. And you're a, oh, you're a writer. Cool. Uh-huh. <laughs> Let's get you a notebook. Yeah. And he literally is like, your skills will come in handy. <laughs> also, you did very good, too. Both of these pictures are going on the refrigerator. Yeah. And she says, Kate says to him, she's like, because he's like, oh, and you'll be a space journalist. And she says, great. Having a notebook in my hand is just what I need right now. And I'm like, do they think that that's how, how journalists operate? Like they just, <laughs> you, 
<laughs> like even now that's fucking anachronistic, but this is supposed to be the fucking future. Yeah. I know. She oh, she has a digital Bible but needs a, a journalist notepad. <laughs> yes. Wait, and have we talked about how this guy is literally Smithers? Like his name yes. she has a Smithers. Yeah. She has a Smithers. <laughs> and we're supposed does. to think he's a good guy at this point. <laughs> like he's like, mm, yes, Smithers. Like, what is happening? <laughs> If you have any questions, you can ask Jeeves right here. His literal <laughs> name is Jeeves. There you go. Like, what? Oh, so yeah. So Miles tour continues. They, they, I love too that like everything's right next to everything else. Everything takes up like one small room at the Hilton. He's like, see that through that door is the mines. Through this door is the greenhouse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those are the two other parts of the Mars colony. We'll see later in the film. That's the Kaiser Permanente having a comp. Nope. Cut, cut, yeah. cut. So, oh, and this is also where we meet Burks, right? So Burks is going to be the turncoat Mars colony, I don't know, tour guide guy. Right, but with zero character development. Nope. He's yep. literally like, okay, I'm bored with you. Here's this guy, Burks. He's going to show you the rest of the way. And then he's like, hey, Burks, what's up? And he's like, this place is a prison. You need to escape. Yeah. And <laughs> I will help with you. you. And he's like, yeah. oh, okay, cool. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Figured you'd feel that out a little bit first. No, okay, okay. We're on the same team. Well, and Burks is like, okay, you're an electrical engineer. Let me take you to our security hub so you can fix the random intermittent camera blackouts. And I was like, oh, what a sloppy fucking way of having him be able to turn off the cameras when they escape. Nope. Nope. Right. They will yeah. not no, they don't do, that. do that. That would have helped. Also, their security hub of a Mars prison colony looks like the back room at 7-Eleven. Yes. Like there's like three <laughs> screens and there's no one in there. Like nobody's right. actually like right. watching them. Yeah, so it's lunch. Everybody at lunch, you can really commit all the crimes you want here. It's just a very inefficient system that we have. Yeah. Well, also, they just entrusted their entire security to some guy who just showed up that day and claims to be an electrical engineer. What? <laughs> but, but so Miles is looking at screens and he's like, hey, wait a minute. Is this a is this a tiny, tiny prison where people have, you know, bathroom stall sized cells? And, and Burst is like, what? <laughs> no, it's like, oh, wow. That screen is a TV show. You don't have Q level clearance. Like, yeah, that's <laughs> nothing. And then one second later, he's like, you're absolutely right. It's no, a it's prison. Actually, Let's it's, get it's, out it's, of it's here. Prison. Yeah, exactly. all escape. From that, yeah, uh, and he's like, "Oh yeah, this is this Mars colony that you've spent the entire movie trying to get to." Turns out it's it's a prison. And he's like, "Wow, we probably should have checked that first, huh? Before we came this whole way." Oh, and also, what are the <laughs> odds when he's like, "Oh, that looks like a prison cell." Who's in there? Is that Sol Solomon? That's Solomon Foster. Come from? <laughs> <laughs> so so stupid. stupid. So he's like, all right, meet me in 15 minutes at the such and such. You know your, your way around here perfectly now, right? You've been here for almost two hours. So meet me at such and such in 15 minutes and we'll escape. And I'm like, wow, this movie's adjusting to its new plot very quickly. So, <laughs> yeah. so Miles goes back to get Kate and he's like, hey, I, I know the plot has changed entirely since I left. And just then <laughs> they're interrupted by a guy who says that they have a member of their family on the phone that would like to speak to him. Oh, right, right. And I wrote in my notes, I bet they remember the 20 minute or so communication delay between Earth and Mars. It's <laughs> 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 like gravity no, in this movie. They put it. a cloaking yeah. device on time. Come on, they're in the Hilton. Come so, on. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> we have a T1 line. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's Rich calling and, and they're like, hey, man, super sorry about stealing your entire life raft without you guys on it. And Rich is like, no, it's okay. I'm still very much holier than thou, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> right, right, right. He also, there's also this weird moment where he's like, well, you, what you guys really need is a Bible. And Kate's like, you guys gave us a Bible the last time we saw you. Yeah, she like pulls it out from under her tatas. Yeah, right, right. She <laughs> literally <laughs> is like, this, this Bible? And it's like, where'd that come from? <laughs> what? Did you take that from behind my ear? Yeah. <laughs> Well, and of course, my dumb ass is like, wow, they're really trying to establish that they have that Bible so that later when it blocks a bullet or whatever, it'll make sense. They're not, though. <laughs> no, they never even open the Bible. No, it's just having it. It's like it's like having an umbrella so it doesn't rain. Like, yes. that's how Bibles work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's why they don't get shot. I got you. Okay. 
she also weirdly pulls a like a metal briefcase out from behind the couch. Did you guys see that? Like for no reason, she just like grabs a metal briefcase. And I'm like, where did that come from? Oh, right, because that's her space luggage, right? Because they, they have to escape now. <laughs> what? Yeah. And this is literally the lowest security prison ever. It's a prison. And these guys are about to do a prison break. And the cops are like, you have a call. Go take it in that room and just talk openly about breaking out of here. It's yep. fine. Right. There's there's no like <laughs> hearing devices any or listening devices anywhere. Clearly not. It's cool. Yeah. So but we learn here, too, and this is going to be very important later, that the illicit Christian group that Rich is uh, that that he leads has an informer in their midst. Right. They say Nero has planted an informant. And I wrote, that sounds like it might be important, but also nothing is important. And this movie is garbage. So I shall immediately forget. Yeah, right. Right. Really might as well. Like, what? Yeah. I don't care. Might as well. <laughs> But just then the transmission cuts out before they can explain to him that Mars is a prison. Right? Right. And so Kate's like, all right, well, let's get on the ship and then leave and, and tell everybody else to go fuck themselves, right? That's kind of our thing. And he's like, no, no, I'm going to save Solomon Foster first. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's his only goal. And yeah. then he fails at it. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And he's explaining this to his wife. He's like, yeah, so I promised some guy that I just met I'd help him and some other guy that we never I don't know I have to go to it's it'll take like 20 minutes and then we'll break, we'll break out of this prison right right he's like you know there are hundreds of innocent people being held against their will here I want to save one of them so. yep. <laughs> all right so meanwhile we go back to earth rich gets a text on his space phone and we know it's this future space phone because it's just a see-through piece of plastic <laughs> There's clearly right, no screen yeah. on it like at all. Ac- it's an acrylic block. Yeah, right. I love that the movie just had to do like a complete turnaround. It was like, all right, we got to Antarctica. That was nothing. Fuck. Yes. Back to Earth for the plot. The, the plot's just an improv troupe at this point being like, oh, yeah, completely. and Earth again, because that last thing didn't help at all. Right. So, but Rich is getting a text from one of them fake cops or real cops that fake arrested them at the beginning of the movie, right? This is... Eventually, this will be Gunther. Gunther, that's his name. And he's like, I got to go meet that cop that didn't arrest us from before. He says he has something important to tell me. And his wife, oh, the second woman in the movie, his wife, who we haven't met to this point, is like, I don't know, man, he's a cop. <laughs> he didn't break into our house, remember? <laughs> yeah, well, we left the door unlocked, actually. We oh, right, right, right. Because we we're Canadian. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we cut back to Mars. And <laughs> this is so great. Kate is just standing around in the lobby of the prison and she overhears Burks come up to some other guy, come up to Smithers and say, ha ha, we sure are going to double cross miles when he tries to break Solomon out of prison, aren't we? And Smithers is like, we sure are, Burks. And then they want to cross. We're in a loud public atrium talking about secret <laughs> plotting. Hopefully nobody's around the corner of a pillar. <laughs> Kate's right there around the corner of a pillar. Right. Yeah. So Miles arrives in space prison and Higgins is there too. Remember Higgins? Fucking course no. you don't. <laughs> and- Which one's Higgins? No, I have no idea. <laughs> he was the cowboy at the potluck that gave him the what for. Oh, okay. How did he get there? Yeah, that's that's when they were arresting them from their for their uh, and stealing their property. They were taking them to Mars. They were prison. bringing them to Mars. <laughs> yes. Well, that seems like a, a very expensive expensive trip especially because you have so much room for prisons you just took all of fucking ranchero vistas you know right. you just just make it a prison right yeah, Walmart, just put... there's so much space <laughs> <laughs> and so he gets to solomon foster and he's like hey man i came here on your ship and i'm here to rescue you and he's like why would you have brought the mayflower to here and he goes right I would have to explain the whole movie up to this point to answer that. He's like, right, uh, just, you know what? Tell me later then. Right. That would not- what actually happened? And they kind of <laughs> say it is like, oh, yeah, we just got on the ship and we were like, let's name planets Mars. <laughs> I think that's the only one I got. And I love how, like, multiple times in this movie when the exposition would actually help, they literally go, no time for formality. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right, but it turns out this was all a trap. And now Miles and his wife, who who followed Burks, I guess, and Smithers down for the for the double cross, are also in tiny, tiny little bathroom stall prisons. Wait, so Burks double crosses is he a triple crosser? Yes, Doesn't he end he up will. with he's, them he's later? Triple. Okay, this is yeah. very yes. stupid and confusing. This is the second of the third level of crossing <laughs> that he will do. Yeah. 
can't keep track. <laughs> oh, that's a great title for the Christian movie, Triple Cross. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> Ah, call us guys. But then but then it would have to be triple cross one, two, and three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they can't get around. <laughs> it's triple cross two. Fuck. Uh, Dude, this keeps happening. This triple cross. Says six crosses, the cross of the it? Mayflower two. The third. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it hurts. Oh, All right, so so now we cut with Rich. He's meeting with the fake cop guys meeting with Gunther and Gunther is telling him about the upcoming false flag bomb plot by Nero right oh sure yeah he's like hey <laughs> for some reason we're giving you this we're assuming that you weren't paying attention when we gave you this exposition earlier so we're going to give it to you again in a few weeks Nero is going to plant a bunch of bombs and they're going to the government is going to blame it on illicit Christian Bible studies and you guys are going to get in trouble. So you need to use this area that I'm showing you now as your hideout when that happens. Yeah. And it's like an abandoned basement warehouse. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which he says is, is quite a bit like catacombs, if you think about it. Biblical. Nailed it. Except yeah. Not at all, because it has like <laughs> it has like electric lighting. Like it's yes. like everything about it just doesn't make sense. No. Like it's just like an old I don't know, like staples that they've like half empty. <laughs> it's the it's the abandoned Walmarts from Jade Helm 15. No, there you, know. go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but Gunther gives them a great, a sweet basement where they can Christian freely. With no food or water, though, I think. Oh, you're right. He forgets about <laughs> yeah right. how, to, how to keep these people yeah. alive. <laughs> yeah. You watch his face be like, yeah, okay. I get it. Like you're doing the catacombs thing. That's that's nice. There's no food here. It's a shitty bit. It could just be a house full of food, though, right? I mean, right. We don't right. have to do just go to somebody else's tiny Rome stuff. House. Come There's on. nothing about it that's catacomby. There's no dead bodies. Nope. Well, yeah. The, the guy even says, Rich even says, well, you know, catacombs were a place of burial. And he's like, is there a a reason you're saying that? He's like, no. It's just I just we want to make it seem like catacombs. <laughs> I just really like the word. Catacombs. Yeah. <laughs> it's like honeycombs, but it's not. Don't say it again. <laughs> so we go back to Mars. Miles is in his little prison cell praying for some sort of plot device or something. Right. Yeah. Out loud, too. So everyone can yeah. be annoyed by him. Well, right. Well, so that Solomon can say, well, let me answer that with an info dump of some sort. Right. <laughs> And I'm starting to get like, is the moral here that you should follow the government up until you want to engage in Christian sectarian violence? Because that's cool too. Like Ruby Ridge forever. Like I feel like that's all that's <laughs> yep. really going on. That is exactly yep. the theme of the movie. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, it's like major under the banner of heaven vibes right now. Yes. Like that's what's happening. Yeah. But of course, out of fucking nowhere, Miles starts talking about how he doesn't deserve God's forgiveness. Every Christian movie actor has some terrible sin that the movie doesn't tell us about, apparently, right? Well, yeah. Original sin. Come well, on. okay. All right. Well, yeah, they tell us about that one. <laughs> uh, my favorite is that I think I finally cracked the formula for a god-awful movie. It's Plot, 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 pray. Plot, 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 five overs. Plot, 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 pray. And rinse and repeat. Yeah. yeah, that's the whole movie. I mean, I think you're being really generous calling any of this shit plot at this point. But that's but the, yeah. Okay, filler, 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 <laughs> filler, yeah, filler, okay, filler. Right. Yeah, and so that's go. the weird thing. It's like they spend so much time on the praying and Bible verse scenes and no consideration is given to moving the plot forward. Nope. Ever. Nope. Nope. None. I have one question about this scene. So they're in the force field jail area, right? Mm -hmm. In these little like, they're in this this one little hallway that this hotel let them have for like five minutes to do the scene. And they put the, the jail cells in between pillars against a wall. And then there's the force field over the front. Why does the force field have a flashy line moved down it? Like, why would they program that to have a... <laughs> A line that moves down it and a sound effect. <laughs> yeah, that means so the people on Mars who built this prison were like, we need to put a speaker into each of these yeah, so things to go. No, that's be yeah. much creepier. because it's like it's like an electric fence for a dog, right? Like one of those invisible yeah. electric fences. Except like your dog, it doesn't go. Yeah. Right. You, right. Like, exactly. Your dog just knows not to go past it because it shocks him every time he tries to. That's what that is. Once again, I feel like they were just showing off how much awesome special effects they could get for 30 grand. That's 30,000 Canadian, guys. That's not even... 
Listen, we spent on the hologrammy thing and the moving line. I have a moving line program that yep. I spent on. So, <laughs> so okay, but so everybody prays for God's forgiveness, and just then Burks shows up and he's like, "Triple cross, motherfuckers!" And they're like, "Really? That's all we've got?" Okay, yeah. right. And I wrote, "Good thing he met Burks in the first one minute of being there because yeah. he really saved his ass later." <laughs> so okay, so then they're like, "All right, how are we going to escape?" and Pretty much it's, all right, everybody kind of just go loo, 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 and don't look <laughs> suspicious. Oh, yeah, they just walk openly through the hotel yeah. to escape. Yeah, right. If they had all dressed as bushes or got on each other's shoulders in a trench coat, it would have been more effective <laughs> than what they did. Is that a horse walking through the hotel? <laughs> What's happening? It's fine. Its, it's front fine. seems to be getting ahead of its you know, Nope, you know yeah. what? They're caught back up. It's fine. <laughs> so they try to do the Lulu Lu normal walking through the hotel thing, but immediately they're like, run, run, walk. We're doing a normal run walk now. We want to go past them. <laughs> yes. And the guards are like, hey, those people are run walking. Yeah, get them, I right? don't see why. Yeah, it's we'll all it is. She's, they're walking down like this large hallway and then they go like 20 feet in one direction and she goes, wait, it's the other way. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like she, she missed her cue and they left it in. <laughs> so, so they escape into the greenhouse. Uh, and, and this is, of course, where everybody's got to be like, set your phasers to stun. Remember that whole big thing about the walls? It's coming back, baby. <laughs> Can't have yep. bullets. So unnecessary. <laughs> and this is also, by the way, where they where we first see the close up of the two dollar store plastic guns that they've taped together with like electrical <laughs> tape. <sighs> OK, so they're going through this greenhouse and apparently Miles and Kate have a plan. Kate will hit him with a hose. And then Miles will hit him with a bar and that'll knock him unconscious. No, but like hitting them with a hose would be more effective than what she does. She just turns the well, water spray them with a hose. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, <that's> literally <laughs> like like they're playing, like they're playing by the fire hydrant, like water. <laughs> Got ya. And they're like, no, I am made of cotton candy. Like it right, makes no melting. sense. Well, but also, yeah, like it, it feels, again, it feels like your picture goes on the fridge too, right? Because he's like, oh, I'll hit him with this bar. And she's like, well, and so I don't have any role in this at all. No, you also do a very important part. You will spray them with water so they'll be wet. With a hose, really? Too. And then you watch the guard actor who gets hosed be like, Okay, now nah, I'm I'm wet while I kill you. Does that? Oh, okay. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna pretend that something with electricity and water. I get zapped because of, all right, good team wins. Fine. Well, yeah, but he hits him with a fucking bar and knocks him <laughs> out. If it had been an electricity thing, at least it would make some fucking sense. But they couldn't commit one way or the other, so they both didn't work. Like yes, that's right. what happened. Oh, did I just make up something that would have worked there? <laughs> yes, yes. And they didn't use. Oh, great. Okay, even better. <laughs> Yeah, because he gets the guy's electricity phaser laser gun, right? And then he's able to phase the next guys. Meanwhile, Burks has snuck into the monitor watching room at the back of that 7-Eleven. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and there's two guys there this time. He he stuns one of them and locks the other in a closet, except <laughs> the, the closet doesn't have any kind of locking mechanism. No, it's just a broom closet that he's like, go in there, I'll close the door. Right, and he doesn't even put a chair in front of it or anything. No. Nothing. He might as well be like, wait, and hold up one hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, heel, heel. You don't get to eat your dinner yet, later. wait, yeah. wait, and just walks out with the hand up, yeah. Yeah, so Miles and Kate laser blast their way to the loading dock where the Mayflower 2 is docked. Right. Oh, and to be clear, this is literally just somebody's garage that they shot this oh, scene because yes. there's Very even obvious. like yes. shelves on the side with like those big <laughs> rubber made bins and like boxes. Yes. <laughs> like it's just clearly somebody's Space garage. Made, yeah. <laughs> old peanut butter jars with old nails in them of yeah. different sizes <laughs> from some old man's tool area. Yeah. So yeah, so it, Burke is meanwhile in the 7-Eleven back room getting the computer sufficiently touched repeatedly <laughs> it's, it's, so, it's so stupid because solomon shows up and he's like which of us will heroically sacrifice themselves to stay behind and open the door and it says like it's just like i don't think either of us really need to it wouldn't be impactful to the script we just met both of us as characters so. hard to decide i'm the guy who invented the magical spaceship to save all of christianity and you're a guard having second thoughts so. that was until today employed and keeping me in prison you work at, you work at a prison colony rock paper scissors <laughs> 
Oh, God. So Solomon's Jesus, that's what's happening Yes. Uh, yeah, he's the... Uh, it's so for no reason. For well, just no like Jesus. fucking reason. Like, he could have held <laughs> no his breath reason. and ran in. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite, though, is that, like, all of these cops have them all surrounded in the garage at this point. And then Burks comes in with the same gun mm-hmm. that they're all holding. But he only has one. And each of them have one. And he's like... You better put your weapons down. And they're like, OK. Oh, you said it like, yeah, right. Because like the, the, the cops say or they say, release him. And they're like, no, release us. And he's like, oh, fuck, you said it second. Damn it. OK. All right. right. Like, makes no sense. We don't I don't have a comeback. So we must go into this closet, unlocked closet again. That, that <laughs> right. is it's, dibs. Damn it's it. because they had just finished improv. Right. They just finished class exactly. and they were like, guys, yes and yes and so, <laughs> it's Michael Scarn. It's perfect. So yeah, so they open the bay doors and the ship can escape, but not without flying real fast through space chasms. Jesus Christ. So we watched this way over long shot of like and I had it listed as Nintendo 64 level spaceship chase. That's yeah, generous. it's so funny. And I wrote this video game sequence is so boring. <laughs> <That's> like, <laughs> exactly it, was, it was like watching someone else play a video game. It really yeah, was. Yeah. Which is something that girls don't like doing, by the way. We don't enjoy this. <laughs> Just to let you know. And I, well, my wife, though, she really does enjoy it. <laughs> I'm sure she does. <laughs> yes, she does. And I love it. He's flying through all these chasms and the, and the uh, one guy is like, hey, man, this ship has a cloaking device, remember? And he's like, we have to lose him first. He's like, okay, do, are you aware of what cloaking is? Because that would <laughs> that would do it. Do you fucking hear yourself? <laughs> why we have a cloaking device. Siri needed to come in and be like, you're so fucking dumb. I'm putting on the cloaking device. <laughs> and also to be clear, we opened this movie with you wearing a cloaking device and learning how these things work. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, but they have to get ahead first and then cloak. I'll tell you. Oh, all right. Well, I'll tell you what. I feel like we all need a minute to migrate back to the middle of our seats after that exhilarating action <laughs> sequence. So we're going to pause for another <laughs> break. Uh, but first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell here. Will the bad guys ever get a motivation? Will the good guys ever be good? Will anything ever make sense? Find out the answers to these questions or not when we return for the hilariously inept conclusion of Mayflower 2. Hey, God, uh, you wanted to see me? Hey, Gabriel, come on in, have a seat. I, I just wanted to talk to you about that project with those 30 Christian people in Oklahoma. Yeah, 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 what's up? So, the whole plan was to have them spread the gospel, and I just went over mm-hmm. your last report. It says you had a rich guy build a spaceship. Yeah, yeah, to spread the gospel to the other planets. Oh, oh, oh all right, look, I was thinking, like, missionary stuff on Earth, you know. Uh, I mean, good initiative, I guess. Just, just just, keep in mind that I'm a, I'm a fucking deity, man. Right, like, right, if we yep. wanted to do stuff on other planets, I could just put Bibles on those yeah. planets. <laughs> totally, no, totally. I didn't, I didn't even think about it. Yes, got it, got, oh, it, got oh, it. Also, it says that you turned the entire government of the United States into a fascist atheism state that's trying to kill all the Christians. Genocide all the Christians. Yeah, I, I, I just figured it could be like a big journey. The, you know, they find a way to flee persecution, like uh, like the Mayflower. You know, the, you know, I had the King of England just let those people leave, right? I did not know that. I did not know you just let them leave. Okay, it's, it, just, it seems like you're making this whole assignment harder than it has to be. Right? Yeah, no, no, sorry, sorry. I totally get what you're saying. Just it, You're saying keep it simple. E- exactly. Got it, got it. Will do. Sorry about that. Great. L- last thing, just curious. What happened with the guy who made the spaceship to save the Christians and help spread the gospel to other planets? Oh, I set up an evil prison colony on Mars, and uh, I brought back slavery, and I had him die there. Seriously? You're micromanaging me! Okay, Art, sorry, we'll we'll see how slavery goes this time. Thank you. And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action on Earth with Rich and his illicit Christians getting awful, desperate, and smudgy down in their catacombs. <laughs> oh, yeah, why are they so smudgy? Well, there's a lot, lot of coal down there. A in lot the of chimney Christian sweeps. Because, yeah. you know, they make their own power, so... Oh, <laughs> coal-fired plant, a lot of coal. And we first see, like, we see the son. What's his name? Emmett. Emmett. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
And that's like, I'm like, why is his son a chimney sweep? Right. Because he definitely <laughs> has a chimney sweep vibe. Because he's skinny like that and everything too. Yeah. But he's big. He's like weirdly taller than his dad, even though he's supposed to be young. And he's super petulant and annoying. He's like, he's like Napoleon Dynamite before you like him. Yeah. <laughs> he's just Absolutely. complaining the whole time. Yeah. Well, the movie wants him to be negative and complaining like it's a bad thing. But what he says, the words that come out of his mouth here are like, can't we just be like, Christian without the bigotry, like PC Christian legal version. And, and dad's like, no, <laughs> you're right. Yep. You're the worst. <laughs> yeah, we are bigots. But it's so weird because they love to talk about how bigoted they are, but they never really do anything bigoted in them. You notice that? Well, like, they, they put it's on very the, meta. Yeah, they put on the robes. But yeah, once the robes oh, are on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, but those are the brothers. Those are the brothers. Those are. Oh, they do put on. Everybody, the gets, the robes. Everybody, gets, Everybody yeah. gets the robes. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so but but this is Gollum's son, Go, the Gollum from before. Mm -hmm. This is his son, and he's not into this illegal Christianity thing. His dad is making him come to church, right? Mm -hmm. So Rich, the the leader of the illicit Christians, he's talking to his inside guy in the government. That's Gunther, and he's saying, "Hey, man, you have to contact my brother Miles. Put me in touch with him. He's on the Mars colony because I guess they don't know that he's escaped yet." And just then, the big explosions that Nero has been planning, the false flag operation happens. Right. None of this made sense to me. I, I had no idea what the plot was here. But now it does kind of make Now that you're saying all this, it makes sense. That's what I'm here okay. for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But, and, and, of course, Miles and Kate have made it back to Earth by this point. So they see all of these explosions and stuff from space. And... Uh, in a very inconsistent manner, the explosions have taken out all the communications on Earth. Except they can still communicate. Except that they <laughs> absolutely can communicate. <laughs> yeah. She says, like, I did some journalism. Yeah, she's like talking to my sources over here and they say comms are down. And they're like, wait, what? What? Yeah. What yeah. journalism did you do? What are you talking about? How are you talking to source? She's literally like on a phone. She's like, my sources are telling me the phones don't work. Yeah. Wait, I'm very confused. What? <laughs> yeah. I'm a podcaster. I'm helpful. No, no. So yeah, you guys are getting a little ahead of me here. So the, first though, we have to get, we go back to the catacombs where Rich is going to call Mars Colony using... Still with those down comms. Right, well, but they're going to use, <laughs> quote, military backup circuits. Yeah. <laughs> which are not down. Oh, because of his inside man. Yes. Uh, yeah, exactly. Gunther's going to hook up with, uh, up with that. And he says, but you can only talk for a minute. Otherwise, they'll be able to trace us. Okay, so there's like tension for no reason. Right, because they don't even talk <laughs> for a minute. They don't have a minute's worth of conversation. <laughs> nope. <laughs> So Rich calls Mars Hilton and he's like, hey, man, is my brother Miles still there? And they're like, nope. And he's like, oh, well, then. Bye, I guess. <laughs> what is this phone minute. call? Hello, Mars. Can I speak to Miles <laughs> O'Rourke, yes. my brother? What <laughs> the, who like, is he talking to? She's like, oh, yeah, I know that guy. He's not here anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you like my shoulder pads? <laughs> <Right. laughs> and. <laughs> Isn't this when Gunther hangs up the phone, like right in the middle of the conversation, when something was about to happen? He's just like, I hang up now. I didn't I didn't trust her. The receptionist. Yeah, that did happen. You're yes. right. You're uh, right. That's funny. So he thought the receptionist for Mars, whatever the fuck that means, was about to trick Rich into saying the address of their basement right, yeah, on what Earth was, out loud. <laughs> what is he nervous about? Also, I don't think she was a receptionist. I think she was literally the captain of the ship. <laughs> like, because there are so few people down there. And yeah. many hats. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Apparently, the head of Mars Colony answers the phone when you call, too. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Hi, this is America, President of the United States speaking. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So then we head back to the Mayflower, too. This is where we get the scene where she's like, yeah, I've just talked to my sources. They say all communications are down. Yeah, it's right. so stupid. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but yeah, apparently Nero has bombed all of major cities. <laughs> all of them. That day. <laughs> and also Ranchero Vista, probably. Yeah. Well, right. Yeah, I, wrote, uh -huh. I wrote in my notes. Who is Nero again? <laughs> I have that note several times throughout. So 
But martial law has been declared because of all the bombings now. Mm -hmm. And the government is saying that the bombers are underground. This is all stuff that she learned from her sources while communications were done. The government is saying that the bombers are all underground Christians. But to be clear, as Heath pointed out much earlier in the film, they're already they've been martial lawing from the beginning. The whole time. Thank you. (laughs) Sure have. What's different now? Somebody had to be like, hey, boss, I know you want to like nuclear bomb every city or whatever, but we already have cops and we're already hunting down the Christian people. The the, the movie starts in the yellow zone. Yeah. 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 (laughs) So fucking dumb. Yeah. So but Burks and Miles are going to go on an away mission, apparently. (laughs) They Well, actually, they have to land the ship. It's okay. It's cloaked. (laughs) I I still wanted Burks to put on a red shirt before they leave, but they did. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all right so we and and apparently this is their they're going to go down and try to save rich and 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 all his christians so the way they're going to do that is they're going to go to rich's house and when they don't see anybody they're going to yell his name a number of times <laughs> <laughs> just shake a box of food rich rich yeah. <laughs> <laughs> check out he likes meow. to get way under the bed he'll get way under the He's bed meow, meow. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Rich is just crawling so, all the way under the bed. So, <laughs> so, but Burks is like, well, it looks like he's not here. Should we give up immediately? And Miles is like, yeah, I think, I think probably. Yeah. Oh, is that what happened? Yep. Okay. Yeah. The scene realized they had nothing and they had to give up and they just left. That's where I wrote, OMG, I have no idea what's going yeah, on. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's where we are at this point in the movie. <laughs> so- <laughs> So, okay. Meanwhile, back in the catacombs, the illicit Christians are getting smudgier than ever. Yeah, Rich just gets dirtier and dirtier every <laughs> scene, but all he's doing is standing. Right. What are they doing down what? there? Stop just trying to squeeze on through stuff? those stuff. Yeah, exactly. Butterfly kissing each other. What are you doing? <laughs> to be clear, I don't even think they're down there. They're just in an abandoned staples. Like that's right. all this is. <laughs> There's no reason to be dirty. Yeah, they say it's underground. Because of the catacomb reference. But yeah, that's, that's, yeah. So, okay. And the kids are all like, daddy, daddy, we're also very hungry. And he's like, right, food, shit. Oh yeah, this little girl, this is the most Canadian part of the whole movie. This little girl goes, daddy, I'm hungry. And he goes, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Question. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Question, why are all the kids wearing orphan uniforms? <laughs> What's happening there? For ambiance, of course. Right, right, yeah. So Burks and Miles, they make it back to the ship. And Kate's like, hey, we've got a message coming through. And he says, on the down communication? She says, on the down communications. Yeah, would you, <laughs> would you believe that? <laughs> but the message is encrypted. And he's like, oh, did you think to push the button mark decrypt? And she's like, I did not think <laughs> to push that button. Shit, I really should have come up with that on my own. But those are the coordinates that Gunther sent him. So now they know where Rich is. Oh. Right, where Rich and all the smudgy Christians are. So this is the decrypted message that they reference later. Yes. Uh-huh. Or the encrypted message. Okay. I was very confused I, about I guess, this very important plot point. I'm so glad because I thought I was wasting yarn at a certain point in this movie. And, and <laughs> no, I'm so no. glad it's coming to oh, hand. No such thing. So. See, my, see my, my, my notes just say, these scenes are very short. If my mind wanders at all, which it does the whole time, I miss, quote, important unquote <laughs> plot <laughs> it's all I right love that Noah's the fucking Christian movie whisperer basically he just like <laughs> yeah. well usually Eli does that job how many times do you watch it uh, just once just once <gasps> why you get all this in one viewing yeah if you can believe that like I know Eli watches it like 12 times because he's like a weird masochist yeah no he really but you get it in one show. viewing yeah, wow uh-huh. that is skill <laughs> oh, thank you so okay so we go back to the catacombs everybody's asleep but one of the kids hears something it smiles but he's wearing the invisibility cloak now i have to point this out this is one of these just weird inside baseball christian movie things we see rich the brother he picks up like a pipe or whatever and he says miles you're cloaked i could have and then there's an awkward silence pause two three and miles goes yeah but you didn't and i know that that so (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> there was what happened there is they deleted a threat of violence in post production to appease the Dove organization, right? He's yeah. like, it, what he originally sense. said was something like, "Oh, so I I could have killed you," and then Dove was like, mm, "Reference to killing one's brother," and they're like, oh, "We'll take it out. We'll take it out." 
He's like, I could have anally raped you. <laughs> no, not gonna. Not gonna. Should we leave that in? I don't know. It's quite biblical. You were wearing a clan robe. I could have killed you. And they cut the could have killed you. Yeah, right, right. right. Yeah. To appease the dumb foundation. Amazing. I love there's a, such a stupid like effort at science fiction. At one point, Miles goes, oh, you know, I, I'm sorry, guys. I forgot I was wearing these this invisibility cloak. Sometimes you you just forget you're wearing these. And I'm like, no, because normally you can see you. <laughs> right, like, I, you can't I see your own that. fucking hand and you forget you're wearing that. That's so stupid. Think about what you're fucking writing on your paper. You also have fabric all over your face because that's how the hood works. That's going to catch the eye. <laughs> and Rich says to Miles, he's like, come on, you got to meet our families. And I'm like, dude, you've been gone. They've been gone four weeks. You're his brother. <laughs> did, you have, did you have new kids and get divorced and remarried in the Do you guys remember who you are in the film? We went to an orphanage and picked up this group. They have the uniforms. I don't know why we did that. that. Explains the uniforms. But I think he literally replies again at this point with yes. no time for formality. Yes. yes. <laughs> I was like, we're, we're well into actually. That would be so slow and clunky. He's like, you're right. It would be. No, never mind. Yeah, let's keep this movie tight. So, right, okay. <laughs> Speaking of keeping this movie tight, this is where we introduced that for the remainder of the film, they have to get all of the Christians from where they are to the ship so they can all get away. But they only have enough invisibility cloaks to get one third of them minus two at a time. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. They, they couldn't name numbers that would divide by three correctly. <laughs> No, you're right, because they said there were 28 people. Right. So I think their numbers are really off. Yes. Re and, but there were 30 of them. It was 28 plus the two. Who, oh. So it would have right. worked if they named the right amount of cloaks, but they didn't. <laughs> nope. nope. But yeah, it, and he's like, so they load up one group with the invisibility cloaks and everything. And he's like, it's very dangerous. We'll have to be really quiet. And it'll be like, well, why didn't you just park the ship closer? It cloaks. <laughs> right. And clearly later they make it very clear that they could have just done that. Yes. Yeah. But they, 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 they even show that there was a ladder that they could have lowered from the ship. So they could have just <laughs> gone straight. They could have gone to the roof of the fucking staples that they were on. And just, yeah. I found free street parking, though. It's a really good spot. <laughs> I get it for like three whole hours. You guys. I'm not paying for parking. <laughs> get a ticket on my invisible ship. And they, they, they reiterate like 25 times women and children first. I, they're like really hitting you hard with yes. women and children first in this scene. And then later, later, the chimney sweet boy, Napoleon Dynamite is like, oh, yes, why can't I go? And they're like, you're not a woman or child. Well, and on the very last group, they have the woman with the baby go. <laughs> That's so stupid. Oh, they're she not. She should have gone first. You would right. think. The baby, because they needed the plot device of the baby cry. Yeah. Well, actually, they didn't. But yes. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, they didn't. Yeah. No, they ne so they never pulled the trigger on that. They they, they right. kept setting it they up. But nope. so much so that we think that they did. But no, they didn't. Yeah. So, okay. So, Miles leads the first group out in their invisibility cloaks. And then he starts uncloaking. And he's like, all right, guys, from here, it gets really dangerous. And it's like, well, then stop uncloaking, you <laughs> fucking idiot. <laughs> it's so much less dangerous if you just keep the invisibility cloak on the whole time. And we know that you can talk with it on because earlier when they barge in, he's like, boo. And they're like, who goes there? And he's like, it's me. Oh, fuck. I'm invisible. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Th th they turn the corner around the side of the building and two evil cops are standing right there. And they turn off their invisibility stuff to have a conversation about it. <laughs> right in front of Loud. the cops. Yeah. And you watch these cops that are fucking Koopa Troopas just walk in one direction and being like, hey, don't turn around when I say this, but did you hear the noise of a cloak turning on? Like, well, no. I don't turn around until I get to the end of this platform, so yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So while they're doing that, we cut over to Blackney, the blue hologram bad guy. Oh, this is my favorite scene. And he's like, hey, you know, we've just, we've, we found a transmission, but we haven't deciphered it yet it's it's encrypted and even once it's not it once we unencrypted it, it'll probably be in code it's like well then it's not unencrypted yet then. Okay. he goes it appears to be a string of numbers and letters and i'm like no no it is a string <laughs> it appears to be and 
that's going to be true whether or not it's encrypted, man. <laughs> what did you expect him to send all emojis? <laughs> that's, just, that's just language. <laughs> I don't know. It's just the smell of purple is what we got. I don't know how to... Do we decrypt that? What? And, and this is the point where I'm starting to ask myself, why is the government so concerned about Rich O'Rourke and his cell of like merry Christians bandying about in the Staples? No idea. Yeah, because this movie is weirdly global and local, right? Like, so this is supposed <laughs> to be happening all over the world, but everything's really going down in Sepulpa, Oklahoma or whatever, right? And like so far, they've done nothing except hang out. Like they've not engaged in any sort of... Well, they've made their own power and gardened. <laughs> like a while ago. Yeah, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. Played a good deal of board games. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. So Miles makes it to the to the ship with the first group. There's this... Nothing happens along the way. No, at all. Right. So you, you can't help but be like, well, why did you break it into multiple groups if nothing was going to happen <laughs> to them? Well, and also, by the way, later, and spoiler alert, we discovered that you can just throw a cloak over more than one person yes. and it still works. Yes. Sure can. So why, don't they, <laughs> why don't they just go out in threes? Like, just, I, don't, I don't understand. Hey, is that a Nazi horse walking by us? <laughs> We're evil guards, but I'm going to let it go. Yeah. Okay, so but Miles gets back to the ship. He's He's got the first group and the ship is getting a message from Blackney, from the bad guy. And he's like, oh, I bet he has a whole bad guy monologue for us. And he's like, yep, I sure do. Yeah. So Blackney knows how to talk to the ship? Apparently, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he made a, a Zoom call to, <laughs> to the ship just to taunt. But I love that, like, Miles shows up and Blackney was like, okay, Blackney's on a call for you. Like, he, so he was on hold. So this <laughs> yeah, he evil head of the atheist government did a Zoom call and they were like, uh, yeah, please hold just a couple minutes and then Miles will yeah, get Miles on with you so you can talk. He'll, when he gets back to the ship, though, he'll, he'll pick yeah, it right like up. Yeah, it's like the host will let you into the yeah. room soon. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, do today, do this. Is there an option where you call me back when he gets there? Because <laughs> I have stuff to do. Also, so he's like, what's the plan here, Blackney? What are you after? And the movie just stops dead and goes, ah, oh, shit. Ah, oh, I don't, we never really, um... And so Blackney's like, all I want is peace in our time. And I'm like, guys, is this movie anti-peace in our time? I think it is. Yes, it is. I think it is. Yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> so Miles turns off the message. He doesn't want to hear about peace in our time. Well, not without saying, who should I fear, God or man? Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. And you're right. like, what? It's like, well, one of them exists. Well, man so. right now, at least, right? Like, <laughs> this guy's going to genocide all your people I right mean, you're, now. You're using invisibility cloaks, so you very clearly fear man. I mean, you know, <laughs> right. God can see through those things. So <laughs> You would think. Okay, and just then, so he turns off the message, and just then, Blackney's minions come in, and he says, hey, sir, there have been strange sightings west of town. <laughs> <laughs> Which town? The, the town, <laughs> Noah. The Sepulpa, town. Oklahoma, God damn it, where all the, where all the action happens. <laughs> The so. Rancho, Ranchero Vista subdivision. Don't yeah. be a dick. So. <laughs> this is when I discovered that Gunther was a double agent. It took me this long. <laughs> I, d I think he's a triple he's agent. Triple. Too. I oh, shit. I recognized him and I was like, wait, that's the cop from earlier. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's hard to tell through all the, the sea of white doughy faces. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> like, who's who? So, yeah, all Canadians look the same to me, too. It's okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so Miles gets back to the hideout, to the catacombs, and he's like, all right, we're ready for group number two. And it's like, really, we're going to do this three fucking times. He's like, if you, if you can believe that shit. But this is where Emmett really goes full gall, right? He's like, I don't want to go to stupid Mars on your stupid ship with your stupid invisibility cloak. And, and, and Gollum tries to talk him down by reminding him about that story where, where the three prophets got thrown into the furnace and Daniel. Was that what was happening? Because the sound design was so bad that I couldn't really understand him most of the time. I should have been watching the subtitles. Yeah, yeah, no, the subtitles were great because they would say stuff like brothers grunting from time to time. It was <laughs> a ton of fun. I think he closes that with, we will not be disloyal to the one and true God. Capiche? <laughs> yeah, see, yeah, okay, dad. Yeah, this is the kid, the gaw kid being like, okay, so you're saying we need to get on a spaceship because... Jewish guys from 2000 years ago would be disappointed if we don't because of a furnace thing with a guy named Daniel. 
Or just to be clear, we could not hate gay people. Those are the options. Right. And dad's like, exactly. We're doing the first thing. Yep. Right. <laughs> we are not going to politically correct church, damn it. So meanwhile, the, the bad guys are still hard at work on that code. They have a <laughs> they have a partial, a partial decryption. No, because he goes, we only have a jumble of numbers and letters. That's not a partial decryption. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's just where you started. Okay. <laughs> we have different numbers and letters now, though. <laughs> what amount of decryption tells you it's coordinates, but you don't know the coordinates? <laughs> No, it just How none do they of it think makes it. Decryption works. So earlier he says it's decrypted. It's just a string of numbers and letters. And now he says it's partially de- or it's encrypted. Now it's partially decrypted. We have a jumble of numbers and letters. Okay, it was the smell of purple. We got it to numbers and letters. I think they're coordinates guessing. Yes. But now we need to get what the coordinates are. Oh, and it wasn't the the encryption specialist, the decryptor that said it was coordinates. He's no, like, was we black. have numbers and letters. Black and he walks up and he goes, clearly coordinates. <laughs> right. <laughs> I looked at it for one second and I know that. <laughs> and I'm like, but coordinates don't have letters. <laughs> it's just the numbers. <laughs> you guys, it's like uh, virtually everything would work here except coordinates. <laughs> no, he's like, he's like, the letters are only E, W, S, and N. I cannot for the life of me figure out what this means. A lot of time when there's four next to each other, it's like, that's that. Because it's T, H, E, T. If the first and last one are the same, it's like a cryptic quote. Oh, there you go. We got this. So, okay. So now the second group also gets to the ship without <laughs> any event or thing happening whatsoever. And Kate is like, only one more trip left. And Miles is like, no, actually, uh, two more trips because we have two too few cloaks. <laughs> this is a huge plot point. They have two cloaks too few to get it in one more trip. Keep that in mind. Yet again later, they all hide. Under the right. clothes. Not only that, but when they lose one of the people, they still have two cloaks too few. <laughs> So fucking stupid. But just then, the bad guys decrypt the message and they get the coordinates. It turns out the coordinates are an abandoned warehouse on, again, the west side of town. Right? It's the bad side. Yeah. West. <laughs> Wrong side of the town. Sinister. Track. So Blackney's like, I'll be there in an hour. And I'm like, really? A whole, a whole fucking hour it's going to take. It's gonna make right. How like big is this sense, town? Right? It's, very, it's like 12 people. I'm on hold on a Zoom call. It'll be a little while. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't let me in their personal Zoom room yet. So yeah, so back in the catacombs, they're they're now suiting up for the fucking penultimate trip. <laughs> Why would you do this? Why have it be a fucking fox hen grain thing here? <laughs> just have the numbers right. Just, just go with all whatever. It's so stupid. But before they can go, though, the bad guys show up in the warehouse. And now, as we've mentioned, all of them can hide under one giant stitched together cloak. Yeah, it's just they a just pile. They just can also walk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but they're hiding. Wait, they're hiding from the shitty kid, right? Didn't the shitty kid just narc them out? Yeah, right. So they, they all hide. And then the the cops show up and the shitty kid, Emmett, he comes in and he's like, hey, guys, I'm the turncoat that we talked about earlier. I'll help you find them. They're right over here. Right. But then they're not there. Right. Well, yeah, because they're invisible. And the cops are he's like, they're under an invisibility cloak right here. And the cops are like, ah, it's a bunch of bullshit. We don't believe you. And he's like, I guess I could probably just tug on it. (laughs) (laughs) But instead, I'll just stand here, jaw agape. (laughs) He just gets in a tug of war. No, stop. No, stop. You stop. You stop. They're not here. And then they're having a conversation about how they need to go and save Emmett. Like, like Emmett's going with the cops. He has decided that he wants to be with the atheist government, I guess. Yeah. And like, they take an inordinate amount of time to like have a diatribe about why they can't rescue the narc kid who doesn't want to come with them anyway. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah, and by the way, that means that they have one fewer person that needs a cloak now. <laughs> You're right. This movie will not recognize that in any way. Okay, now the fox just leaves. We just go across the river, right? <laughs> right, <laughs> yes. We just load everything. But no. But yeah, so Gollum wants to save Emmett. Rich is like, I don't, maybe we'll save your shitty kid in the fucking sequel or something, man. But not now. We've got too much shit going on. Yeah. And of course, this is where everybody has to have the like, but which of us will stay behind or which two of us will stay behind without cloaks and and be the heroes of the movie. And of course, it's going to be Rich and Miles, the brothers. 
Oh yeah, they like do like a weird fake out. They're yeah, like, they're like, oh, it. let no, me put ha, on this. You got it. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> Hot potato. They run away. Touch you last. Yeah, and the guy's literally with his fist in the air, like you guys. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Touch you last is the rule. <laughs> <laughs> and this is absolutely my favorite moment in the entire fucking movie. Rich and Miles come up, and the two Koopa Troopa cops are still out there, right? And he's like, "We need to create a diversion," so they just yell. Psst, Hey, over here. <laughs> like they're trying right. to distract alley cats from their lunch or something. Right. And it doesn't work at first because the Koopa Troopers are still facing the other way. Yes. So it's like, psst, psst. hey, Lois, mom. This is going to be useless until they get to the other end of that platform. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not a diversion if it's just, hey, look at me. Now, fuck, what do I do? I guess I'll go hide behind a dumpster. Yes. Yep. That's not a diversion. <laughs> like that's just come chase me. Oh shit, there's nowhere to hide except a dumpster. Yeah. Yet somehow it still works. And especially not helpful if you get behind the dumpster where you're supposed to be hiding and then you take out a really loud radio and start Oh yeah, his walkie-talkie's like, Boop, can I get your location? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're behind a dumpster, over. Oh, bleep, you, bleep. push the button again. <laughs> also, by the way, they're creating a diversion so that invisible people will be able to sneak by. <laughs> What the fuck is going on in the mind of the goddamn eight-year-old at Sleepaway Bible Camp who wrote right. this shit? Well, they're eight, you know. So. Break. We need to make enough noise that nobody hears the violin going blunk, 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 blunk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Miles and Rich, they, they run off and they're like, they're calling the ship and they're like, hey, after those guys get there, why don't you come park closer to us? And, and we can get on the ship. And they're like, fuck, man, we should have just done that in the first place. Why the hell didn't we think of that? Yeah, they're literally like, bro, I'm behind a dumpster. Can you pick me up? And they're like, sure, toast. Yep, yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> yeah, problem. <probably. laughs> like, what? Yeah, we're an invisible ship. We can literally do whatever we want. It's really super easy. <laughs> There's also a great moment where, the, so they get to the rendezvous point and they think, they, they're like, hey, do you think that they're parked here or not? Because it's invisible. And so Rich just starts throwing rocks into the air to see if one of them plonks off the ship. Oh, that's why he's throwing rocks. <laughs> I just so wanted him to break the window. And they're like, well, now we need a new window, Rich. We're going to space, you asshole. <laughs> Literally all I wrote for this entire scene, because it's just them like running and throwing rocks, was I can tell this scene is supposed to matter because the music is getting tense. <laughs> <laughs> and then I wrote heavy breathing and rock throwing for some reason. <laughs> So yeah, so now we have the now we have two grown men playing laser guns, right? Because it, like the the cops show up in their fucking 2018 SUVs from the future, <laughs> and they have to run around like shooting laser pistols at them and sending drones after them and everything. And we just again we just get two grown men going, oh, hide behind that tree, can't get me, didn't you missed you missed it, didn't get me, didn't even get me. See, <laughs> I have bracelets, my magic bracelets, it bounces right off. <laughs> Wow, you have a lot of notes for this next scene. <laughs> <laughs> I also love, so we go back to the ship, right? And the third group is showing up on the ship uh, or at the ship. And the guys running the ship, like Burks and, and Kate are like, hey, hurry, hurry. And the guys, the third group is like, why? What's going on? What are you, <laughs> you're, you're escaping from an evil government that's trying to kill you for your religion. Is that not enough to merit hurrying? Were you just following the people with the invisibility cloak this whole time? <laughs> just because you didn't know why? Yeah, he's just like, he dropped some acid earlier in the night. Oh, so yeah, like, right, having so a good yeah, time. Like, no, Are we invisible? Do what or? they tell me to. I don't know. I saw these guys at White Castle. I've been hanging with them for a couple hours. <laughs> so, yeah, so... Rich and Miles duck off. They call the ship and they're like, hey, guys, uh, are you here yet? We're sick of throwing rocks around. And they're like, no, uh, uh." which means they could be like, hey, meet us at a different place. The cops are parked at our original rendezvous, but they don't. No, the conversation <laughs> literally goes, boop, where are you? Boop, coming. Yes. <laughs> it's like very specific. Right, right. <laughs> like, how do they know where they are? We tried to get close. It was alternate side next to where you said to go. <laughs> Again, I'm not paying for this. <laughs> so, yeah. So the good guy ship shows up. Don't worry. It's invisible. So they didn't have to pay for extra graphics or whatever. <laughs> Luckily, the bad guys are absolute fucking stormtroopers with their guns, right? Because they're just in a clearing shooting at an at two unarmed guys. And I don't know. They, they throw out like 4,000 lasers and never hit anything. Yep. Yep. 
Also, they send a drone out to get him. Now, the graphics are so bad that I'm only putting this together in retrospect, but I think that the invisible ship hits the drone. Oh, oh, is that what happened there? I think so, because the drone, we never hear from the drone again. They're like, what was that that we hit? And then we never hear from the drone again. So, hmm. oh, OK. They really need to hire you to like post hoc make their shit work. You know? Yeah, yeah right? you could do those like those like DVD extras. Yeah, <laughs> <where> you <laughs> like explain the movie with the director. <laughs> Like, oh, what you, what you so were going I can explain the movie was. to the director at this yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and, okay, and then this is so fucking stupid. I love this so much. So Blackney catches Miles, right? He's got a gun on Miles and, and Rich. And then LeBlanc turns on Blackney. And you're thinking to yourself, wait a minute, you what? guys forgot to tell me who LeBlanc was. <laughs> yeah, sure did. who's LeBlanc? We never met LeBlanc. <laughs> it's just some dude that's like, ah, but I was on their side the whole time. And it's just like, we don't know who you are, yeah. man. Noah just walks into the frame. Okay, LeBlanc was a triple cross <laughs> guy. You guys need to, this is important. The, the Mayflower was invisible. It ran into the drone. He's a triple cross. The other guy earlier is actually a pentuple cross looking like a triple. Those are kind of the same. This all makes sense. You're welcome. But but then that doesn't matter because then all the other bad guys show up and like, yeah, but LeBlanc, we're on the bad guy's side and now we have guns on you. <laughs> oh, wait, is best. LeBlanc the guy later on in the ship that's wearing the marching band uniform? Um, well, it, is he? I think Bur I think that's Burks. No, no, no. There was oh. another guy. Oh, like, okay. I recognized Burks. And then I was like, well, how is there another marching band guy on the show? Oh, that, there you go. Yeah. No, that, that was probably LeBlanc or maybe Gunther. Jesus Christ. LeBlanc <laughs> means the white. The bad guy is called Blackney. This has to be on oh, purpose. No. Oh, no. <laughs> They're so French. Crazy. They know the French for yes, the white. You're right. You're right. Oh my God. No. So, okay. So now everybody has a gun on everybody. And there's this moment where Blackney just starts talking through the writer's inner monologue. Right? He's like, <laughs> oh, everyone has a gun on everyone. How will it end? Will I shoot you or will A shoot B and triple cross C or will A first shoot C and then B will double cross D? <laughs> They just, it goes on for so long. The great, a fox and a hen show up. It gets so complicated <laughs> that they don't know what to do. And we, they, for 10 minutes, the movie, while we watch, tries to figure out how the standoff dynamics work. Yes. And they don't figure it no. out. And they're just like, chip blow up things now so we don't have to figure it out. Explosions. Yeah. What about that? Huh? There's like <laughs> missiles on the, on the ship. It's like, why wouldn't they have started with that then? <laughs> Fuck, did the atheist guy leave for the day? We don't know what to do right now. <laughs> Can we get him back? Can somebody call him? So, okay. And then they're like, all right, get on board the ship now. We'll drop the ladder. And Miles goes, wait, there's a ladder? And Chris and Rich goes, yes, there's a ladder. And then they drop a rope. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Could they not afford the word rope? What, you didn't... <laughs> Very easy edit. Like, I just it seems you don't, like it would be you don't a, have to digitize a ladder. Just say rope. <laughs> just you know, don't lie in your script because you can just write the not lie. So yeah, so they they get they tie the rope around them and then then they all get away. And Blackney is very very upset, as he would be. I mean, yeah, well, I, I don't here. What, what are the consequences of this for the atheist government? None, There are right? none. There are no consequences. Right, because they're gone now, one way or the and other. And they got their land. So that's what they wanted. Right, right, and they got them off of the planet. They don't even have to pay to feed them in a prison. <laughs> this is win, 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 win. Right. So, okay. So now we cut to the Mayflower 2. It's made it back to orbit. And the movie is trying to retroactively tell us what the plot was. Oh, that's what's going on. Right, because <laughs> so, so we see the lights are all switching back on on Earth and they're like, so do we go to Mars now? I mean, that's a prison colony. They're like, no, we go back to Earth. And he's like, the planet we just left? Yeah, it's so weird. He's like, <laughs> we've escaped, but we have nowhere to go. It's like so sad. Yeah, they're like, we're like the new Mayflower. And I'm like, mm, colonialists, you guys don't see what's wrong at all. with <laughs> You're Canadian, guys. I feel like... Oh. <laughs> <sighs> oh, and then there's this weird emotional montage, but like there's no history. Right. So it's just all these people who we don't know looking at walls. And stuff. We see LeBlanc <laughs> looking pensively out into space and we're like, who is he? <laughs> <laughs> 
oh, and then and then and then they're like, but we will stay here on Earth and help the Christians. It's like you're in space now. You're not on Earth. <laughs> That's <laughs> very good. See, I thought they were like, God will guide us and bless us into colonialism. Yeah. And they were going to go off into the universe and colonize, you know, and populate and and I, missionary. I guess. Yes. Yep. Yeah, because they, they say, like, may God guide and bless our mission. I'm sure he'll figure out a plot. The yeah, end. <laughs> for the Mayflower. Yeah. This is something we're proud of, apparently. Yikes. <laughs> and I, I will say, so the credits come up, and I it is so sad how many people are in those credits. Like, so many people dedicated some portion of their life to this. There were two people listed as fight choreographers. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. S somebody was like an advisor on how to hose somebody else in an aggressive <laughs> way? You literally watched the credits of this. I was so thrilled the second the first word popped up. I was like, done. I'm done. I did it. <laughs> so, all right. So once again, we have an impossibly heavy handed movie that still manages to be completely ambiguous about its moral. So we, we've, we've tried a few on to any, any guesses though for you guys? What final answer? What was the moral of the story? Ah, uh, if Christians want to take their ball and go home, let them because it doesn't fucking matter. That's great. Okay. <laughs> all right. I kind of like that. Mine was, um, if your government changes its name to Nero and goes all PC on you, you should probably start a revolutionary Christian sect of 28 people and escape <laughs> on a spaceship, but not to Mars. You want to go anywhere but yes, Mars. get your ass to not Mars. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, wait, wait. Okay, so I was still confused, but I decided to read the comments because this was on, on YouTube. Ooh, and commenter Woof. Jason Hen, shout out to Jason Hen. He nailed this. Jay Hens, ooh, ooh. Okay, here it is. <clears throat> Are you ready? I'm going to try and do it the best justice I can. Okay. Quote, it's kind of a little goofy, but offers some clean escapism and is right on with the central message that in this era of decades of easy bellifism. What? Anybody? Is Any ideas? Word? No. E easy know. beliefism, I'm sure. Oh, easy the, beliefism. Is, wait, but, but no, he spells it easy bellifism. Easy yep. bellifism, all one word. Yep. The no cost to our faith false doctrine we're suffering through four decades, number four decades, producing many who have joined and have faith of word only. Now with COVID times, we see many falling away when there is no cost to their faith becoming apparent, though it has exposed the few remnant churches and all are growing like weeds. Now that all can see, the letter C, the difference between those with their lamp on a hill versus those with theirs under a basket. That's for God to disguise about, though very biblical times, I think, period. That's Hoping one sentence. For... That whole That's thing was sentence. one goddamn yep. sentence. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Hoping for repentance, number four, and then revival, but not seeing much of that, but biblical that way. It doesn't exactly conform to dispensational pre-trib eschatology, though, considering <laughs> it's hundreds of years forward of now. And in 2022, the pre-trib thing is looking very likely for the good and bad of it, period. Still overall with no budget. <laughs> Still overall with no budget, I suspect. Totally worth the watch. Thumbs up emoji. <laughs> <laughs> It's about as clear as the film itself. Yeah, right, right, exactly. <laughs> oh, let me get my yarn and my pushpins and work on that. I've got, you need yarn and pushpins to diagram that sentence. That's so good. Jesus. All right, well, Kara, thanks as always for hanging out with us. Always a pleasure. Oh, sure, if that's what you want to call it. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure for us. So. <laughs> And well, that does it for our review of Mayflower 2. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to chase our tails again next week. So tell us, Heath, what's on deck? A view to a kill. Oh, you're going to go after the James Duran Bond. Duran soundtrack? Fuck you. Fuck yeah. So with that to look forward to, we'll bring episode 354 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Kara Santa Maria for hanging out alongside us. If you want to hear more from her, be sure to check the show notes for links to her other work and a perhaps even a huger thanks to all the Patreon owners that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation to patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Skate, The Gadius, Citation, Data, D&D, Minus, and The Skeptic Rat, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick and Jeff on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath and Wright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, 
We'll leave you with the Breakfast Club clothes. They went back to Earth, and well, you'll have to tune in to Mayflower 2. Two? (laughs) (laughs) Emmett went on to learn about butt stuff and not really care what church he went to anymore. (laughs) For sure, that's what Emmett did. (laughs) During that first winter on Venus, (laughs) nothing happened because they all got vaporized way before they landed on Venus. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved. For the love of fall, Starbucks pumpkin spice lattes and pumpkin cream cold brews are back. Smooth espresso dashed with pumpkin pie spice and velvety whipped cream. Or cold brew topped with pumpkin cream cold foam fit for the season. Your pumpkin awaits. Order today in the Starbucks app.